This is S4 with your host, Eric Cooper. Folks, and welcome to S4, where we talk about the real issues involving paranormal and current events coming to you live from the S4 headquarters in the heart of the Cascade Mountains of Washington State. We also cover topics as, such as disaster and terrorist response and preparation and veterans' issues as appropriate. So, I can't believe it, but tonight it's the 19th of April. April's almost done, and you know, it took six months to go through March, and it's already time for roundtable. So we have a full house tonight. It's going to be an awesome show. I mean, it's always an awesome show, but the more people you have a roundtable, the more questions and the more views you get. So tonight we have Colin Kayla. We have Francie Miller, our psych therapist from Idaho. Joe Algaier, our California contact. Nathaniel Romo, paranormal investigator. And homeless and cannabis advocate in California. Barry Gount from the Into the Fire Radio and the Kentucky MUFON director and paranormal investigator. And in the second hour, we have Jason Midian, a paranormal investigator out of Pennsylvania, who will be joining us. How's everyone doing tonight? Perfect. Hey, we're doing great. Thanks. Uh, How about you? Super good. So we're, we, we're all still isolating and, and staying safe and working in the garden and doing spring cleaning and everything? Nope. Walking into people's houses and licking them while they're asleep. Oh, that's awesome. I like that. <laughs> Via the astral projections. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So everyone has, uh, you know, for, for the listeners who don't know what Roundtable is, so we, we have a panel, uh, you know, everyone comes together uh, third Sunday of each month, and we, uh, we all bring three questions. We, half the time, don't get through all three questions, but we really don't worry about it because uh, it's just fun to talk about the questions. <laughs> that, that's really what it boils down to. Um so, Nate, we haven't had you on the show before. Tell us a little bit about yourself real quick. Um, I'm a disabled vet. I served in the U.S. Army. Um, been in the paranormal since I was a kid. Um, had multiple paranormal experiences. Uh, one when I was in Iraq, you know, three of my first tour. In fact, it was uh, April 14, 2003. Uh, two guys in uh, hit with a roadside bomb. Two days later, we're going down that same path. And we saw them telling us to go left. We went left. The Humvee behind us went forward and hit a bigger bomb that killed nine other soldiers. And the Army said it was uh, lack of sleep and Adderall that had us on. But me and 17 other people on the, on the rig saw Sergeant Bauer and, and uh, CFC telling us to turn left. Huh. That was my paranormal experience in Iraq. Right. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, we, you know what? We're, we're, we'll have you back on definitely on Memorial Day and the veteran shows, and we'll talk. Uh, we'll, we'll tell war stories. That's usually what we do on the, uh, the military shows that we do. Um, let's see. That's going to be a hard day. What's that? Memorial Day. Why? Well, you think they're not going to be able to do the things they normally do? No. It, uh, like, it won't be so hard anymore, but there's a lot of guys out there, veterans, right, that rely on that day as a form of social interaction. Social interaction and solace, both. Yeah. Uh, you know, but honestly, Memorial Day is, is there's no nothing saying they can't go to the cemetery and honor their, their deceased friends. Yeah. So... It's not going to change nothing. It's going to take the ritual side out of it. It's going to take the uh, ceremony side out of it. 
Uh, what do you, what do you think, Nate? Uh, a lot of his vets like to isolate. I mean, I know I did when I got out. But the long day do. usually brings <laughs> all of us together. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't see a, a you know, it, if I want to go visit my buddies at the grave, I will. There's nothing saying I can't distance myself from other people because there's not going to be if there if there's a whole lot of people at the at the cemetery there, there's yeah most of the other people there are dead anyway so you're not going to get anything from them absolutely <laughs> I, and i don't i don't usually for now <laughs> for now yeah for now until the zombies come out yeah. <laughs> yeah now when the zombies come out we might have issues but it's okay i've got the zombie bible i'm ready and just remember to double tap and cardio and by yeah. everything we know about zombies, they're not good at social distancing. <laughs> well, it depends on which movie you watch. Some of them run, some of them just go, eh, brains, whatever. But they do it in groups, always. Little <laughs> <laughs> oh, buggers. <Yeah. laughs> I can't wait for the zombie apocalypse. Oh, no, pointy. <laughs> you know what? Pointy sticks will be the, be the everyone's going to be going to pointy sticks for the zombie apocalypse. Absolutely. They're going to run out of bullets. Just just saying. Bullets don't last forever. Uh, so, Francie, let's start with you tonight. Okay. What's your first question? My first question is, well, I've got, let me think here. Why do you think that Ouija boards work so well for opening portals. So, you know what? What the hell is that noise? Oh, the coyote? Uh, is that I think we just opened the portal. <laughs> the, coyotes are to come, the coyotes are trying to come to the Ouija board. Oh, yeah, anyway. Eric, yeah. put the board away. <laughs> I thought I did. Uh, oh, it's back under the... Anyway, Ouija board. I'll take a stab at that question right off the bat. Go ahead. Okay. Um, just personally for me, never gotten a Ouija board to work, ever. Um, I, you know, we had it in the house when we were a kid. We had the Milton Bradley. We, in fact, we still have it. It's out in the barn somewhere. <laughs> and we used it a lot when we were kids trying to make things. And I know my brother was always pushing the plant shed around. <laughs> but I've never had an experience, one, with a Ouija board. Well, that's why I, I have. Laugh. I, that's that's why I laugh at. Oh, be careful! Zozo is gonna come. So there's two supposed <laughs> there's two supposed demons that, that everyone talks about. With the, you know, I I had an experience with, with Zozo, and so there's Zozo and there's Zaza. I, I, yeah, so Zozo is supposed to be a nasty guy. Uh, has nothing but negativity, uh, you know, death to humans, that kind of that kind of stuff. Zaza is a female demon who really doesn't give a damn. She's there to play. And that's all she does. But, you know, I, I, I think in order for you to properly get a board to work, the more people you have, think of energy. If you only have a couple mm-hmm. people or one person, you don't have enough energy unless you're, you're already, I don't know, psychic psychically connected, uh, you know, something of that nature. If you already have talents, then you might have the energy by yourself to do it. But the more people you have, sure, the, the, the more chance you have of someone just pushing the plant around and nothing, nothing's going on anyway. But the more people you have, you have a, a better energy barrier to actually open something. I, and that's what I was thinking... Go ahead. Intent. I was thinking intent, and like it's a, it's a tool for focus. Right. It, it's not, it's not necessarily, you know, it's, it doesn't have the power, but it's kind of a, um, an, a non-threatening tool that you can use to focus. Uh huh. And it, that goes the same with uh, tarot cards. It goes the same with pendulums. It goes the same with scrying yeah. ears. It goes and the guns. same, huh? And guns. Well, Just guns a tool. Work too. <laughs> With a tent. Just a tool. <laughs> hey, hey, absolutely. So, Izzy makes 
Ouija boards. Huh? Izzy makes Ouija boards. No, she makes spirit boards. Totally okay. different. Okay. Totally different. Oh, what's the because, What's the difference? Okay, so a Ouija board is just a bunch of letters to uh, throw on a board. A spirit board. What she does is uses uh, a pendulum with a board. Um, oh, okay. Uh, it, it actually, because usually pendulums uh, either have a crystal, they have bloodstone, they have amethyst, whichever stone, you know, am, amethyst, for example, being a pea stone, uh, that's the, the properties of that stone. Uh, that, again, the word intent comes into play. Um, I need one, because I use a pendulum, but I'll, uh, the only, I just do yes, no, I, I can't, there's no spelling involved. Right, but if you have a Ouija board, or a an alphabet board, right? You, you can actually use a pendulum a little easier uh, to identify, and it's much easier for a spirit to channel through. Uh, and then you get into the argument a lot of people have is, well, you know, tarot cards are just as bad as Ouija boards. No, they're not, because Ouija board is actually opening. It's just opening a door. Anything can come through that door, and it's usually a, a, a lower, ne a more negative entity that can come through that door. Whereas you have tarot cards. And pendulums actually are used at a much higher vibration to where it's higher vibrating spirits, entities, spirit guides, things of that nature come through to communicate. That's where the difference is. Right. Okay. Now, do you think it makes a difference what it's made out of? Like if you made a mirrored board. <sighs> that could be a whole show. Um <laughs> Because okay. yeah. I mean, so if you're if you're using cedar, cedar is a protective wood. Uh, it's usually for, used for uh, protection, healing. Uh, oak is used more. It's a harder wood. It's usually used for spirituality, uh, more spiritual vibrations, things of that nature. Uh, you know, the druids, for example, used to use. Uh, oh God, was it the rowan? The I'm trying to remember here. I'm scared of rowan. Uh, I'm trying. I'm scatterbrained. Anyway, or and it, we have <laughs> mountain. It's mountain ash. Yeah. In our there area. You go. Uh, yeah, it, it is. It's ash, rowan, and cedar. Or oh no, oak, oak. <coughs> uh, but yeah, uh, you know, the, wood. Certain trees have certain properties. Certain stones have certain properties. Certain plants have certain properties. They all have their own uh, intentions, their own use. Uh, rosemary, for example, if you plant a rosemary tree outside your home. Uh, it is very good at keeping negativity away, negative spirits. Um, and that's why a lot of, uh, you'll find a lot of paranormal teams that actually use proper tools. They don't go in there and sage. Sage ain't going to remove nothing. It, it, no. it, 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 and that kills me because even in Forest Moon Paranormal, we have people that sit there, well, you need to call in a priest. Why? When you die, if you were an atheist when you died, do you really think a priest is going to remove them? No, they're going to laugh and get pissed off. Um, I can't tell you how many cases... Sage is a deterrent, though. Like, it stops them. Well, okay. not stops them, but... It, kind it of keeps them from coming back. Yeah. It acts as a barrier. Yeah. Not a very strong one. Right. It's like it, bug spray. <laughs> it's the much. one without DEET. But, no, <laughs> you don't go running into a haunted house or someone with an emergency and just saging the, the, the residents because that's not going to do a damn thing but piss off what's there. you got to get to the root of it Find out why it's there and help it cross or combat it out. And then you then you do the sage. But we don't do sage. We use sage, rosemary. Oh, God, I'm trying to think of what the formula we use. But we actually have a formula that we burn on charcoal much, much stronger than just sage. No. Yeah. Sage is a good that. antiviral. It actually does clean bacteria and virus out of the air. Now, sage... Yeah. I, I will say this about sage, because you're absolutely right. Um, the Native Americans use sage for uh, for purification. Um, mm -hmm. and it's also been scientifically, yeah, scientifically proven to actually change the atoms from negative to, to positive. Uh, so it is good on, on that side of it. But it's not, you know, and I've gotten into arguments with other investigators that, oh, my God, I always use sage. Well, good for you. If, you, if it works for you, then great. But it's not going to work on every case because if you, get I think a, I, if you get a basic spirit, it might push them out. A basic spirit. I think the the big 
problem there is that they they in, in they think that the sage has the power when in actuality it's them that should be using their intention to have the power and sage is just a, an additive again yeah it, 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 on that side of it yeah it, it's a tool but the humans got more power than the sage does yeah cuz when uh, yeah. Um, when you use un, like when the native americans use sage as a deterrent it was using a ritual yeah, you have to complete the ritual, otherwise it does nothing. Like, you actually have right. to talk. And you, what you you're to... doing is you're asking for... <clears throat> you're asking for your ancestors to come in mm -hmm. and protect your home from other entities. Yeah. Excellent question, though. Yeah. <laughs> we we kind of got off on a tangent. Hey, well, it's okay. <laughs> well, okay. I, you know, it's information. I want to expand her question a little bit, like just mm -hmm. clarify one part, because she, she's asked um, about them opening portals. Does a Ouija board just open a portal, or is it possible that it talks to something that's already in this vicinity? It can go either or, but they're usually used for opening portals. Okay. Right, so okay, if, well, if you made one out of a mirror... Oh like God. did a mirrored no, board. No, don't, don't, don't bring I, and I'm not saying you <laughs> should do that. that. I'm just saying <laughs> that. <laughs> no, that's a whole other topic because never I mean, mind. Keep talking. <laughs> I I can order that off Amazon, Kayla. I'm good. I'm great. I don't know, know Amazon mirror. <laughs> Mirrors by themselves can open portals without a we without even the actions of a Ouija board. Uh, yeah, mirrors like, you know, are it, portals. Say again. Mirrors are portals. You put one if you put a mirror and a mirror across from each other. You've got a serious problem because you've got Absolutely. a portal right there. That's exactly you know? what I was going with so, <laughs> A lot of times you go to people's houses and you look and you go, why are you've got these two mirrors together? You know, right. why do you have a mirror away from uh, and, and you got another mirror behind it because it's, it's a portal itself, you know? Whoa. Right. Wasn't that the basis of the Hellraiser cube? Uh, no, it wasn't Hellraiser 13 Ghosts. No, but the mm -hmm. cube in Hellraiser, the inside, if I remember right, when it opened, was it, it was all mirrored. Okay. Well, yeah. Mirror within a mirror. And it makes up Mirror within a mirror. Yeah. Uh, you know. Oh dear hey, God, I, in those house of mirrors, it like those particles. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. We don't mess with the house <laughs> of mirrors. So, uh, what, I, what's I, your, I what's your thoughts, throw Dave? Into it. No, I mean, I use my Ouija board. It's right maybe 86% 86 of the time I give it. Like, I asked if I was going to get into a master's program, and it said, uh, master's of social work. I applied, and I got in. Nice. I mean, mm -hmm. there were times it was off, times it was on. I mean, it's hit and miss with the widget board. Right. Right. And that just I, might be your spirit, like, your um, your energy strength at that point in time. Before which is totally person. possible, so we'd be, you can definitely use your own energy to answer your own questions you know if, if you have that power to seal that board off and you're using your own energy then yes you can do that but you know um hey let, let, let me throw one in the mix okay <laughs> okay uh what's the difference between a ouija board and a spirit box frequency spirit, spirit boxes <laughs> can be manipulated and fake to be fake so i know a guy in the Southwest County, Brian Provy, he had a spirit box, and he had a rig to say certain phrases and words to make people believe there were ghosts when there was really none. It was just a spirit box he had rigged up. Oh. Well, I and, and so since we're, since we're talking about this, let me throw another one in there, because uh, there, there's another one that I really have a, a lot of doubt with. I can't mm -hmm. remember what it's called, but it's the one that throws words out. Obulous. Huh? Obulous. Yeah. So what do you think about the ovulus? I think it's got too many pre-programmed uh, factors in there uh, to where anything can throw something in there. What's your thoughts? That's just um, a mathematical my... algorithm. Well, anything with an algorithm yeah. has the ability of creating something else. Okay. <clears throat> like, <clears throat> if you have something that generates letters, if you have something that generates words, <laughs> at some point it's going to generate two words that go together. Right, I think exactly. the only time you can prove that, though, is if you know the history of the location, and you walk in, you know, uh, Charlie Chaplin was there at one point milking cows, and it says Charlie and cows. Right. Um, right. 
Well, the, well, the key, about, but, a, but the key think, about a good investigator and a good investigation is the research we do anyway. Right. You know, it's not like uh, the, the real paranormal investigator, the boots on the ground par- paranormal investigator is going to be doing a ton of research. You know, most of our cases are all research first, and you, you, know, you get the five. You know, the twenty percent of the case is the investigation itself, right? And then, and then you got the review and everything else, and doing the evidence, and then, and then, and then determining what you're going to do for the uh, for for the client. But I've seen offices do some pretty weird things in certain places, and they have know. nailed some, and they have nailed some things. Same thing with spirit boxes, yeah. Uh, but in the spirit box form, we're communicating. You can be communicating. You can pull stuff in from is on a frequency wave or anything else you can pull things from down the street down you know anything around it. it's not just in that house it's not in that area uh if you've got if you got something walking down the road uh you're going to pick it it's going to be able to come in right what i would want for the ovulus is i would also want a computer programmer programmer inside there sitting at a computer that's hooked up to it at the same time Mm -hmm. and watching the code yeah, so you know what the uh, well. The first thing about it is is to know what two thousand words they put in it. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if you have the two thousand words you put in it, and all of a sudden you're getting a different word, and I've seen some pretty nasty. I've seen some pretty strange words. <laughs> but like, if, if come out of it, so if it's only using one randomizer, mm-hmm. um, in the code. Yeah. Then that that's not enough of a. There should either be almost like thou, a thousand times a, um, randomizer or zero of them. If it's not using any randomization codes and it's just running, right. then I could see it being a true piece. If it's running over a thousand different randomizers at the same time, then I can still see it being a true piece if it's accurate to the history you gathered in your research yeah that's that's the part that you have to do you have to gather everything up because each tool has its own uh, good but if you just take it as it is you don't do any research you go into a place uh you uh, listen to you know most of the pay hunts everybody else you know they're not full uh paranormal investigators they go in there on the weekend and they get something and it's like, oh, golly, it, it told me this, it told me that. You know, it all relates to what you know as the history and the research that you've done to be able to make it a better piece of equipment to be able to determine what's going on there. And if you can download it for 99 cents off of the Google app, <laughs> <laughs> that is damn good. <laughs> well, that, that, that's what kills me is, uh, you know, so much of this equipment is in apps. It's in digital equipment that we all know the paranormal manipulates anything digital to begin with. Yeah. So <laughs> I wouldn't even be worried about the paranormal manipulating it. Okay, I walk into a Walmart with my phone on and it says, <laughs> "Hey, review Walmart." Okay. So if I walk into, let's say, a Northern State with my phone on on an app, they're like, "Hey, you're in Northern State." Yeah. Oh, look yeah. at the history of Northern State. Oh, throw out this word. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great question, Francis, because, yeah, it, it, it's nice to get to a paranormal question versus, well, current events, <laughs> which we know we'll be getting to current events. Um, Joe, what's your first question tonight? Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> no, oh, I was, I was just thinking, I was, I was going to jump in there for a minute when you were talking about the ovulus oh, go ahead. and the spirit box and everything. Uh, everyone, you know, like you said, the ovulus has pre-programmed words and the spirit boxes run through a thousand channels. I, I like to go old school. You just take an old radio and dial it to a, a place where there's no station. Right. And let it sit there. Why not? If it's going to work, Why it's going to work. You can't say, oh, well, it's a pre-programmed word and are you picking up another radio station? No, if you get it's something, you get something. Absolutely. White noise, Exactly. Sometimes old school works better. Yeah, and oh, like, like about a hundred percent. What were those ones that they that with the turntable, where they put like a blank? Uh, oh crap! What are those? 
a, re- a record, <laughs> a record yeah, player? A, a, yeah, I'm sorry. The record players, but... She's they put, been in uh, isolation too long. <laughs> <laughs> but they put, like, a blank record on there. Right. And they let it just spin and see if it picks up any noise in the area, like... I've never done that. I've always just mm. taken Aussie songs and turned them backwards, <laughs> see what comes out. Right? <laughs> play it. Right? Yeah. And play hey, it so backwards. What's your, so what's your first question tonight, Joe? Um, well, this one, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I was just wondering, each one of you, what is your, personally, your scariest paranormal moment? And give details. <sighs> You should make her go first because no, she, said, she said the bad <laughs> word right as he said that. Oh, um, I got to think because I don't get scared. I, the, the only one that's moved me out of my house was uh, when the knife went flying across the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> and we moved. I can tell um, you mine. Yeah, go Ooh, ahead. Go for it. Okay, so this was when I was a young married young married woman living in an old farmhouse in Kentucky and my he's my ex now but my husband was away like at he was working away and so I was in the house alone and this house was rough <laughs> the downstairs was habitable the upstairs it was a mess it was kind of the roof leaked and we just kind of used it for storage and uh, I was there alone and still unpacking, and I went up the stairs, and I heard a voice in my head that said, see that railing? Sure. You could hang yourself from that railing. Mm-hmm. And I, it freaked me out. My dog would never go upstairs. Did you anyway, ever, I had a German... Ch- did you ever research and see if anyone ever actually hung himself from a railing there? Well, I was working at a drugstore. It was right after I graduated from from college, and there were no college... <laughs> there were no college jobs in this little town in Kentucky. And uh, so I was working in a drugstore, and just getting to know the ladies there that I was working with, I, and I just happened, they they asked me where I lived, and I told them, and one of the girls got kind of white. I mean, she was like, her face drained of blood, and she said, ooh, that, that house used to belong, or belongs to my grandpa. And I said, okay, don't tell me anymore. Somebody hung themselves from the railing in the upstairs hallway, didn't they? And she got more pale, and she said, yep, that was my uncle. <coughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> Easiest way to do, uh, yeah, you, how long did you stay in that house? We were there for like another six months or so. Oh, okay. I, it was creepy. <laughs> it was creepy, but what I did oh, was I just like pushed with my mind against the the voice and bl- basically told them to f off and you know don't ever bother me again. Mm-hmm. And I we never really had any more. Yeah, except for the feelings, I never really got contacted again. Good. And, and you know that the, that show is right there. The the power of the mind is stronger than most of your spirits and energies. Most of them. Yeah. So what, but what we you, had Barry? all kinds of weird. I mean, like it it wasn't a happy home. It was a, like me and my ex broke up for the first time while we were living there and then got back together later but it would you couldn't have been a happy family in that house right hmm. which was uh, that Barry? well that's a <laughs> that's a tough one because <laughs> I've had so many of them over the years <laughs> you know um I'll tell you, there's, uh, I'm going to tell you two. I'll tell you one real quick. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, I was at a location and a uh, uh, we were doing a ghost hunt there. We were doing uh, uh, EVP session, and uh, something uh, came into the room. It was very noticeable. It was in the room. Uh, got very very ice cold and everything else. And then something grabbed me by the leg and squeezed my leg. And it squeezed it so hard that it actually burned it. And fluid was running out of my leg down my sock. And it oh left a God. burn mark on my leg. Hmm. Uh, the second one is a UFO story that happened here in Kentucky. And uh, it was to the point of... Uh, uh, you, you know the case that I'm actually going to talk about, Eric, and, and uh, your, your team knows about it. I, yeah, well, it's not it's not Hawkins. Yeah, it's, it's out. In, uh, yeah, it's out. It's out in uh, eastern uh, Kentucky, uh, in Wolf County, and we were out there. And uh, he says, "Well, I'm going to show you this tower. It's weird things have been going on up to this tower." So we went up to this. Uh, a cell. Well, it was, I thought it was a cell tower type thing. It wasn't. It was some kind of government tower. It had been the first time we went up there. Uh, we got. Uh, we were up there, kind of looking around, standing on the side of the road, and uh, four, uh, well, two four wheelers came up, and uh, there were two guys uh, in each four wheeler with uh, uh, ARs, uh, military garbed the whole nine yards and sat there right behind us and then we I just got to the point where we gotta leave. The second time we went we decided nobody was there. We walked up to it and came out and uh, the frequency was very, very strange, very weird. We we left and as soon as we got in the truck and turned around and we were back on this old country road. I mean this place was way back in there. And we had a a black uh uh, Crown Vic, totally blacked out, come right up underneath the bumper of my truck and pushed us down the road to this curvy uh, lumber road uh, at about 55 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour. And I, I'm like going, this guy's going to kill us. And then and my case with this is doing the same thing. And uh, all of a sudden, he just shoots off the road and hits his brakes and hits this water pile. And, poof, and, I, and I'm like going, oh, man, this is not right. He's going to come after us. Uh, the next thing I know, um, we are sitting in his driveway. Okay. I, you know, and I'm a proud, uh, gun carrier. He's a proud gun carrier. Uh, when I go on those kind of investigations, I always take, uh, a weapon with me. Right. And, uh, we're sitting in the truck, my truck kind of dazed, like going, how the, you know, how'd we get here? And we're looking, and he had a bench laying out in front of there. And I says, what is that laying on your bench up there? We got out, and we kind of stumbled around. We went up, and both of our pistols were laying on the bench. And I sat down, and we're kind of regarding our stuff. And I says, hey, i got to go to another investigation. I'm supposed to be in uh, Lexington. In fact, I was going to stop at the one in Lexington on the way back home. And I looked at my watch, and I said, hey, I looked at the truck when we left that Plague, it was it was one o'clock. Now it's two fifteen. And I says, you know, you only live eight minutes away from this place. Where we where have we been for the next last uh forty five minutes? You know, to to an hour. And uh uh we basically said our goodbyes and everything else and said, This is really weird and I said, Yeah, now I've become part of your case, so now I've got to get another investigator and we've got to look at all this stuff. Right. I start heading home, he calls me, he goes, man, there's all kinds of vehicles around my house, you know, and they're all, they're all just hanging around. And as I'm going down the road, I'm passing SUVs and stuff like that are sitting in the middle of the road. I get down the road and he says, man, I'm real sick. And, uh, uh, as I'm talking to him on the phone, his nose starts to bleed and everything. And I go down the road a little bit and my arm starts hurting really bad. My right arm. My right forearm, I look at it, and I've got a gigantic puncture wound in my right forearm. And I call him back, and I go, hey, uh, how, how, how are you doing? He says, uh, I says, I just want to ask you, do you have any marks on your right arm, on your forearm? 
And he had a puncture. He had a puncture wound. So I had him take a picture of that. And I took a picture of mine. And then I go down the road a little bit further, and I'm just driving down the road. And all of a sudden, I look, and my whole shirt is just covered with blood. My nose has started bleeding, everything else. And I had to pull off to the next exit to take care of that. But that was probably the strangest, I mean, and scariest moment as far as when you as an investigator become part of your case. That's, that, that's, oh, that that's, is a strange absolutely. part. You know, that, that, that's, that's, just, that's the same client you call us into, is it not? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, we won't go into details on that one at all. Yeah, oh, no, I mean, but that's, but that's how weird, but that's how weird that case is. I oh, mean, that yeah. case is oh, just yeah. that strange. Absolutely, yeah. that's when we uh, got out of uh, all the abduction side. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, really, really I mean. Quick. Um, and it's not even so much the alien aspect as when you have the government aspect or the human side that, that's threatening you as right, well. The, right, the um, my life side. The my life side is what's bad. I mean, right. oh. Absolutely. Yeah, that sucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> for the capital S. <laughs> oh. So, Nate, what's your scariest story? Um, kind of two where I've seen apparitions. One was um, Wolf Manor in Clovis. Me and my some friends went there. And we broke in to like just investigate, and it was like around two thirty, two forty in the morning. We had flashlights and digital recorders. We saw this giant, at least seven foot shadow figure walk across, stop, look at us, walk forward, the door slams shut behind us, we go up and no one's in the room. No one's in the room, no one's there with us. Fresno PD rolls up, talking to us, we're like, yeah, someone had called us, but there's no landline, nothing, no power to that house, but they got a phone call from them, like, we're just investigating, and he he told what we saw, he's like, yeah, that, you know, it's haunted, you get phone calls all the time. There's no power to that house. I think shadows are probably the most intriguing to me of all of all the entities that we that we deal with, because there's so many different variables of them. Sure. Now, and you know, depending on which month you're in California, and there's an alien race called the Rogue that resides in California. That spell it, here. Eric. Huh? Spell it, Eric. R O G U E, Rogue. Okay. Um, and not much is known about them other than that they they are flesh eaters and they do all their killing from January to March. That is their feeding time. And they are the ones that fly a craft that looks like a hat. It looks like a flying saucer with a, a raised square appendage. Sure. Looks like a hat. And that's the race that has been accused of possibly being Jack the Ripper. That's the race that uh, has under under uh, ocean bases on the coast of California, on the coast of France, and on the coast of Italy. Last I knew, um, mm-hmm. but they only they only kill from January to March, and they are in California, and they are a shadow. But their shadow is te- it's technological. Uh, technologically caused. So do you think that's where Hat Man came from? Oh, well, the hat is their technological device. Right, that's so what I'm saying. I, I think it's okay. one of them. Uh, you know, I, I think there's more than just them that causes Hat Man. Because, hmm. uh, well, they go back as far as 13th century. Yeah. Th- this race does. I think, they have, I, I think they may even go back uh, farther than that. Another, another form of them. I think they may even go back farther than that. Oh, you know, possibly, but, possibly. Yeah, yeah. They, they were the race that was causing, uh, there were like 12 children that disappeared in the UK, and I believe in the 12th century. Oh, wow. That, that they were supposed to be the, the cause of. Interesting. And again, uh, it, you won't find a whole lot documented about them. Specifically, uh, if you look on Dante Centauri's videos, he talks about them a lot. Mm-hmm. They're here in California, right? Yep. And it's only until March, so it's April, so I'm okay. <laughs> hey, you're absolutely okay. You're in a bunker. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Joe, they're it not going to come to your bunker. Laying, 
Well, 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 they've been laying low because of the coronavirus. They may be coming out a little later. <laughs> oh, <man. They're> <laughs> the only UFO I ever experienced was that I was at fishing at Fort Campbell or in the field. And look, they thought it was a shooting star, and it split into two more pieces, and it hovered around 500 feet, all three pieces, for about five to six minutes, and the radio was going nuts. We don't know what it was. Choppers were flying around it, and all three went vertically straight up. And to this day, I have no clue what it was, and never seen anything like it. I I have heard of that case. Hmm. Uh, that know. was back in uh, two uh, February of two thousand, right after Y two K. They put us in the field for a field training exercise, and like we had fifty cows locked on it, fucking artillery set, and no idea, no radio contact whatsoever, and they all went directly straight up. Were you actually doing a, uh, a, um, what do I want to call that? Um, training exercise? Yeah, training exercise where you had uh, other people in the field that also saw that? Oh, in another area? Yeah, we had, uh, we, we had about 3,000 people that saw that. Hel- yeah. Helicopters in the air were hovering, going, what is this? We have no radio contact. And we pulled out Stinger missiles, like, do you want us to shoot this down? Hmm. Is it hostile? And, like, we have no clue, just, and then, boom, they shot vertically straight up, all three of them. One of the stories that I heard about that was that a C-130 was actually taking off, and it was actually held off the ground while that was going on. It was stopped in the middle of the air. Wow. Okay, okay. I wow. think I read about I think I read that report in either New Fork or uh, MUFON, maybe. Yeah, it was probably a MUFON. But, so, yeah, that was... And, and, you know, that... <laughs> there's so many cases over in military bases of, uh, you know, the new, uh, the nuclear nuclear bases that were uh, shut down that... Uh, so, yeah, Fort oh, Campbell... Yeah. Fort Campbell alone has, has its own history. <laughs> oh, yeah, Fort, Fort Campbell, uh, uh, Fort Knox has its own... Uh, I don't think, you know, you've got some big uh, uh, military bases out here. Plus, you've got uh, the other areas in Kentucky, the Daniel Boone National Forest, which runs all the way to uh, Tennessee, and that's where the National uh, the National Guard Training Center is. Right. Uh, Isn't Kentucky, there supposed Austin. to be a big underground, like, tunnel facility kind of stuff over there, too? Yes, yes. And you, plus, you've got, plus, you also have Bluegrass Army Depot, in two different locations outside of uh, Lexington, but almost before you get to Winchester, and then also down in Richmond, where they store all of the all of the hazardous chemicals and uh, uh, things of uh, mass destruction uh, in bunkers down there. And there's been a lot of activity over those things. Okay. So mine would have to be when I was about 18. Um, so I'm from Drumheller, Alberta. Um, it's an area known for two things, dinosaurs and coal mining. Um, we were out at the Atlas Coal Mine, a bunch of us drinking. Um, we hopped a few fences with, with a cooler of beer and Went out and sat by the old coal mine and just had kind of a bush party. Um, It was probably about 1.30 in the morning in June. And we uh, were all sitting around talking and all of a sudden, out of one of the old shafts, we heard the most horrendous roar we have ever heard. Um... Pretty much all of us lost our crap. Like we were, we were done. <laughs> we had all been <laughs> drinking for a little while, and we hopped those fences, went right back into town. But uh, what do you think probably... it was? So here's the thing: Drumheller doesn't have any big predators. We we don't have wolves. We don't have obviously we don't have tigers. <laughs> for in, um, it's not a huge bear area. It's more desert like. So, we were all trying to think of what it was, and one of the guys made a 
joke, and now it kind of makes sense more so, because back then I wasn't into the paranormal. But he said T-Rex um, ghost. T-Rex ghost? You know, no one's never wow. talked about dinosaur ghosts. Now, here's the thing. Atlas Coal Mine, they stopped digging on one side um, into the hill because they ran into bones. Oh, my God. And the problem is when you run into fossilized bone in a hillside, um, like in an old mine shaft, mm -hmm. you can't dig into that. It messes up the machinery. There is too many um, gases near it that you have a um, possibility of opening up a pocket. Right. Uh -huh. So they, whenever they run into bones, they stop drilling and they go the other direction. So I don't know, but like it, it, it is a possibility that it was the spirit of a dinosaur. For it, it could be because I mean we 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 hear reports about spirit dogs, spirit cats. Uh, you know, I've never yeah. heard of a spirit bear other than Native American legend. Yeah, but you uh -huh. know, we, we we hear about ghost animals, so it could. There's no reason it couldn't be a spirit dinosaur. Well, and the thing is, there were so many there, like. Um, you walk along the river, and that's why Drumheller is known for the dinosaurs, is because there was a, um, a surveyor from the USGS was plotting the um, the river down there, and he was in a canoe, and he stopped for lunch one day, and he rested by what he thought was a stump, and it's actually a freaking thigh bone. <laughs> Whoa. Mm -hmm. Like... Well, I uh, I spent three years digging up dinosaur bones uh, in Ekalaka, Montana, and also down near Rangeley, Colorado. A lot of years digging up those bones and never had a weird paranormal experience. But now that I think about it, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, ain't it? <laughs> oh, it's very interesting. I like the idea. <laughs> so do I. Hey, look, it's T-Rex. Get the sage. Get the wow. sage. Oh. <laughs> Eighteen-year-old well, drunk teenager. I didn't like the idea. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't have imagine? to worry about T Rex grabbing you. But can you imagine? Well, that's true. <laughs> can you imagine having a T Rex spirit protecting your house? Oh well, you know. Look at that. Just look at the thought about that. You know, when we walk around this earth, there's a lot of things that are buried here that are ancient. Okay, right. And are deep. And actually, when we get in there, we are playing with old, almost like a tomb or anything like that. And those spirits can be very uh, restless. And there's, uh, I like to consider them at a rest. And if you bring one up that is not a rest, you're going to have something that is going to be very angry and very mean. And we don't even, there are different types of beasts and everything else throughout the whole area that you, you're going to have to deal with, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and when we talk about portals, like we have the normal portals that are out here, uh, you know, uh, there's been times when, uh, you know, the freakiest thing I ever said to somebody is, hey, have you ever heard of a pterodactyl? You know, they go, Barry, I, uh, ter nobody's heard of a pterodactyl. They've been dead forever. I say, yeah, well, I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, the, you, then you have the you ones who don't believe explain. dinosaurs ever existed. It's like, really? Right. I chalked yeah. him up with the flat earthers. Yeah, well, you know, there's <laughs> there, there are so many different uh, realms of uh, what uh, we call our reality that we really have to uh, uh, take a look at all of them. You know, it goes even back to the question of, uh, you know, uh, one of my questions tonight was about giants. And, uh, uh, you know, we know that they were here. And uh, why are they so... Um, hidden from everybody what what is the what's what's the great secret that they don't want anybody to know that there was giants here on this on this earth all right um, um, um joe what yeah. is your scariest story oh you know i thought about it i've had a lot of weird things happen over the years but um i'd have to go back to probably the first one I was about eight years old, uh, went back to Indiana, 
uh, to my great grandfather's house that had been boarded up for 40 years. And the family all met back there to kind of go through and see what's there. Um, I'm eight years old. My brother, he's five years older than me, and we're standing downstairs in the living room. And it's this old ranch house, big two story, the huge place. Classic haunted house, if you want to think of it that way. And I looked over to my left, and there's a lady standing at the bottom of the stairs. The Victorian dress, she's got her hair pulled up in a big bun and everything. I'm looking at this, and then I look at my brother who's standing next to me, and he's looking in the same direction, and his mouth is hanging open. And I said, do you see something? And he said, there's a lady at the bottom of the stairs. At that point, I said, yep, and I turned around, and I walked out of the place, and I stood outside <laughs> the whole time they were there, and that was kind of my first foray <laughs> into the paranormal when I said, yep, something's going on. Right. Huh. Absolutely. All right. Let's the interesting think- thing was we did find out that before my great-grandparents had bought the house, I mean, it used to sit out in the middle of nowhere on this big farm, and there was a lady that had lived in the house, and she was really sick, and her husband had killed her in that downstairs living room. Oh, no. So, And that was years, it was years later I heard that story, and it was like, holy smokes, maybe that's the lady that was standing on the stairs. Yeah, but it wasn't there. scary. It was just, like, startling, like, who's that lady standing there? <laughs> and I realized, no, nope, she's not supposed to be there. And it just kind of opened my eyes, and... It's been a roller coaster ever since. Yeah, that's usually the first thing that gets <laughs> yeah. people, gets people into the paranormal is that first that first experience. So, Kayla, do you think that some people can see that kind of thing and some people can't? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. It's just like absolutely. with your it's just like with your Ouija boards. I've tried them. Nothing. I, I'm as psychic as a rock. I mean, nothing's going to happen, and no one I knew did. So that's probably why it wasn't working. On the other hand, when I had that first experience, we were kids. And I think kids are open to everything. Mm-hmm. They see things that we don't see. Just oh, like yeah. dogs Ooh. and cats. Dennis is saying oh, in, the it, ch- in the chat room yeah. about getting back to T-Rex. Uh, they, they reproduced the sound of the T-Rex by scientists. He's got a YouTube link to it. But, you know, thinking about that, we look for spirits with spirit boxes. Can you imagine hearing a T-Rex coming through a spirit box? You oh. wouldn't even know. No. Infrasound. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and who's to say we haven't heard it and just didn't recognize it because we didn't know that well, that's what T-Rex sounds like. Um, Kayla, what's your scariest story? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> it would probably be, I guess, the first one that I remember. Uh when I was seven, uh, my grandmother passed away. And there's a series of, okay, this sounds weird, but there's a series of three events that happened right after she passed away. Um, the first one was the day that she passed. Uh, me and my little brother, who was four at the time, uh, were playing in the upstairs living room. Now you gotta understand that the house that we lived in was terrifying back then. My grandfather had made it himself, and it had started out in 1922 as a one bedroom like shack, and then he just kept adding on to it and made this really creepy basement that was all made out of uh, concrete. <laughs> um, but we were sitting in the living room upstairs, and my brother's favorite thing to do was to go and jump in my grandmother's lap in her rocking chair that she had. And he would sit on her lap and he would talk to her. Well, we didn't know she had passed away yet. And me and my brother were in the living room and he ran over and he jumped in the rocking chair. And uh, my older sister asked him what he was doing and he said he was talking to grandma. Um, That night when I went to sleep, my grandmother... I woke up like in the middle of the night and my grandmother was sitting on the edge of my bed, like down by my feet. Uh, And she did that all the way up until a week past her funeral. 
Every night I would wake up and she would be sitting on the edge of my bed down by my feet. Hmm. About a week after her funeral, my mother took all of us to the Puyallup Fair because she wanted us to kind of get over it. She wanted us to do something fun as a family. And uh, it was me and my siblings. So there was five of us in total, me, my siblings, and my mother. And uh, at my grandmother's funeral, they had played that uh, Colin Ray song, Love Me. Um, and we were walking past the grandstands, and there was this guy standing there that waved my mom over and said, Hey, I have five extra tickets. Would you guys like to go into this? My mom had no idea what it was, but she was like, Okay, sure, why not? So we grabbed the five tickets. She looks at the tickets, and they were second row center tickets wow. to a Colin Ray concert and the first song that he sang when he came out was Love Me which was a song that Aww. we played at my grandmother's funeral and after that none of us ever saw her in the house again huh you, you know and when you when you look at I just want to use a comparison <laughs> but a lot of spirits like that that are ancestral after they've crossed they can come back at will. And the, the, these are usually the cases where they'll come back at will for <coughs> guardians, basically. Just to check, on, mm -hmm. check in on family, check in on uh, grandkids they haven't met, you know, things like that. And these cases, oftentimes you'll smell a favorite perfume in the house. You'll, you don't smoke, but you'll smell cigars. You'll smell tobacco uh, from a pipe, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, that was the closure she needed. Well, so here's the thing. Kayla's family has a reunion every July, the second weekend in July. And they've done it this uh, this year. If it is the first year, it won't happen. But it will be the 67th year that they've had this reunion. With over at least 200 people every year. The thing is... <clears throat> Most of the old ones who started us have passed away. Mm -hmm. So they might pop in. Well, here's the thing. Oh, they do. It's always been what we've said was the reunion will never end. Even if we stop going, it'll never end because the people who have passed on Most will continue go. to go. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing they used to do was they had these huge cast iron pots that or frying pans. They were like what, 20 inches wide? And they would cook fried chicken for the Saturday lunch. Mm -hmm. Two years ago was the first year we didn't do fried chicken. No one made it. Oh, they were pissed. We could still <laughs> smell it. Oh, for real? Yeah. <laughs> there was at least 10 people who could smell fried chicken, yep, and everyone were, was looking. They were pissed. <laughs> All right, yeah. with that, we need to go to our first break tonight. When we come back, we'll have Jason with us. Absolutely. So here is Poltergeist by Crypt Amnesia. You are listening to S4 on Spreaker.com. They say I'm evil. They say I'm dead inside. Check out my ego. Cause I'm rotted here tonight. Just burn me like and watch as I catch fire, but I cannot die. I am your bolter guy. Your bolts are gone. 
Welcome back to S4. Tonight wow. is our April round table, and we have a full house tonight. We have Jason Midian with us now. So, welcome, welcome Jason. Back. And uh, just a quick shout out to the Sons of Sin and Rocker. Um, Rocker had an accident on his bike this morning during a uh, memorial ride. So, hope you're doing good, bud, and get better soon. Absolutely. I know they're uh, doing lots of riding. Yeah, it's, now, it's an easy way to social distance. <laughs> yep, <laughs> absolutely. So, let's see, Nate. Let's yep. get your let's get your first question. Okay, my first question would be: um, Nate, did we lose you? What if? The, oh, there we go. Yep, what if this? Fire is the distraction from the pedophile ring in Hollywood and those in power associated with Epstein. What if they release it to distract us from the pedophile ring? I, I'm going to be honest. You know, I, I've heard a lot of different conspiracy theories about this whole virus thing. And I can get on board with some of them. But you have to think global. Uh, I can get on board with it. it. It could be a push to a one world government, one world religion, one world uh, monetary <laughs> currency. But every country is heavily affected. And, you know, I, I've talked to a lot of different, uh, being paranormal, in, the paranormal investigators, so I've talked to a lot of paranormal investigators in Norway, UK, uh, Australia. Uh, you know, and they all take it serious. Their country is locked down. And they're all confused why in the hell the United States is the only country that is not taking this as serious as most of the rest of the world is. And, you know, I don't have a good answer for that. I think it's stupid. We need to be taking it serious. We've got thousands of people dying. Uh, you know, and now the United States is the highest number of casualties of, uh, of, the, of the world. Um, you know, and it's, uh, instead of taking it serious, we got our own government that puts it down, and, and you know, oh no, confiscates no. medical equipment. Yeah, and you know, I'm not going to get get political here. That's not my intent. The intent is, if it's a conspiracy, I think it started as a natural virus. I do think that. I don't think it was man uh, man made. You know, coronavirus itself is a common cold. This is just a manipulation of it. This is a, uh, a mutation. There, that's the word. Uh, a mutation of it, and it got worse. That's what it is. Uh, you know, we, we've talked about this on the show before. It's impossible to turn a virus into a bioweapon without the, 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 the whole ramifications of affecting... The, the specific terrorist organization's country because of the weather factors, because of uh, the weaponizing of it, because of you know, there's too many variables there. It, it's not weaponized unless it is a global target. That's the only way. It's not a United States thing. It's not a China thing. It's not a, uh, an Australian thing. It's a global problem. Um, so is it an Epstein uh 
No. No. Well, I, I don't think so. I think the the focus has gotten away from Epstein. Yeah, because we have people dying from a virus. That's why. And get, like putting it on Hollywood again, that that is just showing like it's giving Hollywood that thought that they are still more important than everyone else, and they're not. And I, there is no person in this world that is more important than anyone else. I gotta say that it's honestly true, friend. There is not one person that's more important than another, friend. In the end, we all still die. We all still go into a box, friend. Whether it's a human-sized box or a small little box, it don't matter. You're still going into a box, right, friend? And, and I like Dennis's comment. Uh, so Dennis in the chat room he said the COVID is already receiving the same conspiracy treatment as HIV did in the eighties, and and absolutely, you know, if I have to compare this to another virus, I'd say this is another version of SARS. This is SARS, a different different virus, but this is just as bad as SARS was. Um, but no, I, I have to go with the I have to go with the idea that uh, you said it was naturally occurring. I think some guys were tinkering there in China at the virology lab, and it got loose. It wasn't a bioweapon. It wasn't on purpose. It just happened. And you know, and that's, that's it's a always, nasty virus. That's always a possibility as well. Yeah. But was it intentional? I don't think so, because the ramifications no. of, an, uh, of an intentional global attack, no. Now, if you want to, if you want to go way outside the, you know, outside the box, you can say, uh, you know, I, I've heard this one too, it's an alien plant. The aliens sent this virus. No, they didn't. <laughs> you know, we have thousands of races that, that visit us, that live here, that do their thing. They, they do, they, you know, they... They, they abduct for science. They abduct for social science. They abduct for meat. They abduct for well. And if they if they are abducting and taking them and giving them this, <clears throat> the moment that it turns out the way it did, they're not going to ruin the rest of their test subjects no. on Earth to like see what happens. Absolutely, they're going to abduct someone, take them, give it to them, see what happens. If they die, if they die, if they don't, they're probably going to eliminate the subject. You know what the biggest problem with this whole thing is? Is the media. Yeah. The media mm -hmm. and the fear factor. Folks, if you stayed home and you just isolated like you're supposed to, this would have been gone. Not gone, but not near as many people would have been dying right now. That's just the bottom line. Instead, you've got knuckleheads going, oh my God, this is a violation of my rights. No, it's not. People are dying. This is not a violation of your damn rights. You want, you want to talk rights? Go take some constitutional law classes. Actually read the Constitution uh, and, and educate yourself. Instead of going to Olympia, for example, and protesting because oh, you don't want to stay home anymore. You know what? Deal with it. And hopefully you don't die. That's just the bottom line. Anyway, enough of my rant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good God. So who's got the next question? <laughs> well, hey, yeah, no, you, know, I, I, huh? you know, I, you know, I, you know, I, I can take uh, where Nate's coming with uh, from this and uh, I, I'm looking at it a lot of ways, and yes, we are practicing uh, social distancing and all that. But as we're sitting back and I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at it from a um, a researcher side and looking at everything that we have, some coming down the pike and everything else, there's something definitely wrong with it. You know, like today, uh, Italy is reworking all their numbers uh, because of the fact that, uh, and we also know that uh, uh, look. Uh, if uh, Medicare uh, will pay a hospital three thousand dollars for the for uh, somebody who comes into Corona nineteen, if they go on a ventilator, it's fifteen thousand, and you know that's all that's all pure money. I mean that's what it is, and it, we all know that the insurance company and everything else has always been. I mean if you've got great insurance, you're going to get. I mean you may you may need a stent, but you're going to get a you're going to get a, a triple bypass. Okay, 
I mean, it's just the way that it is. It, it, it's, a, it's a grubby, hungry, uh, money world. It's all working around that. And I mean, you know, we've, we've seen those cases in the past, you know, and other people who don't have the insurance, don't have those things, get stents and get everything else, and they do just as fine. But it's, when you it's start... like it's exposing the holes in our system. Exactly. But, exactly. you know, they, so they're, they've passed a bill, or they're about to pass a bill today that's actually going to help with the, uh, the whole Medicare and the, the medical side of things and give people the free Medicare. Uh, they haven't... You know, they haven't passed it yet, but right. they're working they, on it. They're working, you know? on, it. They're, they're working yeah. on it. So, and, and it's, it's so just convivulated because it could have been, all right, we want to give the people this much more money, and this is where we wanted to stop it. Now it's become political again. Mm-hmm. You know, but where, where Nate came back and, and comes from when it first started, you know, February 26, 2020 is when uh, the United States uh, District Court of Southern California uh, actually put charges out against the pedophiles and all this other stuff for this. And there's an 87 page, uh, write up and they're going against, uh, uh, Barack, uh, Obama, uh, Google LLC, Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, Hillary Clinton, all of this. And, you know, so there is an action out there like that. And there is the thing that you have to look at, and it, it, it becomes a part of this thing. And when you look at the pandemic of uh, these pedophiles and everything else, it's worldwide. You know, yes, they are everywhere. And it's, it's part of the institution of the New World Order to, you know, read the Georgia Guidestones, read everything else. It is part of this stuff. What? But and do you think it's just Democrats? I mean, I think it's oh, no, all, no, no, no. It's on it's, both it's, sides. It's both sides. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, both sides. There is there 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 is a dark black government, and it's including yeah. both both sides. There are people that are not into that who are doing other things. Um, but you know, where where it comes to <laughs> is you really have to look at it because. We know that all of a sudden, you know, like we mentioned before in the shows uh, in the past weeks, we know that uh, cancer is the number one killer, heart attacks is the number one killer, pneumonia is the number one killer. Well, what has happened? All of a sudden, those just drop off, and they, they have been down low as can be. The common flu kills as many people as it does right now. I mean... Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that, that I mean, the common flu every year kills a massive amount of people. It does. All right, we all know that. We don't. We don't go into uh, uh, sold all the businesses and protect yourself against flu. So, we, if you inflate the numbers and you are putting in extra different parts of this puzzle together, and you start saying, "Okay, well, you know, even reading what the CDC said about." how to determine it, if you think it is, you can say it's Corona-19. You know, you don't even have to do an autopsy, you don't have to do anything. You can just go ahead and say, oh, well, the guy came in with a broken leg and he dies of pneumonia, it's Corona-19. And I agree, that that part, that part's ridiculous. That that part is ridiculous. Right, but that's where it gets to the point where, where are the figures at? What are we actually looking at? And why is it being taken this way? And then you have the world order where they want to do viruses. You want to do all this other stuff. So, yeah, I can see where the, uh, if you will, the conspiracist theories and everything else can eat this up. But there's also a backstory with this, with this dark black government. When you start looking at it, it really starts to ring true. And you start going, hey, they are actually trying to put us down. And they're trying to stop it. Plus, by the way, it is happening in a time when it is a political uh, time. And if you don't want a certain president in there, you don't want a certain things, you have tried everything for the last four years to do it. Uh, it may be a, a, a great time to continue doing harm and bull crap, you yeah. know. So, I mean, it's just, you know, and I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican, we're all Americans. We all okay. are here. We all stand for the truth, and we all should be uh, doing it. And that's the problem. You know, we can't have idiots out here going this way and this way. Look, it's all one thing. These people work for us. But, you know, 
uh, and, and they've forgotten that. And they're trying to put us into the, the bind, you know. Uh, well, they haven't been back. working for the people for a long time. They've been they've been bought and paid for by corporations and by big corporations money. And big money. So, and what's the biggest money you've got? Pharma. You know, pharma money is big all over the country. You know, and right. uh, of course, go ahead. A lot it's kind of like a what came also. first. Yeah, and, and they have been bought up by China. And you you look at it and you kind of go. Hey, there is something that kind of sticks in my craw with this somewhere, you know. Yeah, but I'm still going to try to social distance. I'm still going to try to do the things that make sense, mm -hmm. just like you would if you were trying to avoid the flu. You know, if a flu outbreak comes and you do the same thing, you're going to wash your hands. You're going to do the same things everybody else does. If you don't want to get the flu, practice the safe stuff. What all, all we're doing is staying away. We are washing our hands, everything else. Same thing you would do in any type of situation. I mean, we gotta leave. I mean, it's smart. It's just the thing to do. Yeah, but you know? these are these are things that ninety percent of the population probably hasn't been doing until now, which is disgusting. <laughs> right. Well, it is. It is. But, I mean, I mean, but you just see. But now they made it into a fear thing where you're gonna die. <laughs> right. You know. But so when they put this fear thing right. down and they put these, they throw these. 240,000 deaths, it could be a million, and we're at, what are we, 500,000, 50,000 now, and, you know, you look at the numbers of corona, it's really fat, they're, they're talking about uh, uh, Italy, they were just massively devastated, they have 186,000 cases, uh, United States has 658,000? <laughs> What? I mean, yeah. and this was a few days ago, you know? So, I mean, that number doesn't sound too right for me, you know? And I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm just not walking around the right street area and everything else, but, uh, you know, it is kind of strange, you know? But I tell you, you what, could look at it a different thing. way, though, also. You could look at it like the virus is real. Maybe it's being undercounted. And it's the chicken or the egg kind of thing, which came first. You can look at it like the virus came first, and then all of the big money people are going, how can we make money off how of this? How can we profit off it? And how can, right. we, how can we... And how can we politicize it? And that's what they well, do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and I also look at it from the side of the things that anything there's always been slow disclosure on. You know, when you look at UFOs, you look at anything that's happening in the United States or anything like that, the film industry learns about it more. They drip a little bit to them, and these, these shows start coming out. Mm -hmm. Look, Dean Coots <laughs> read a book about a virus hitting in this time. Uh, Sylvia Brown says in 2020, there's going to be a terrible virus that's going to go away, and then it'll come back 10 years later. Mama you know, Yaga. I mean, I mean, you're, you're like going, what the heck? <laughs> I mean, the constant uh, in all of that is people are being lied to. Yeah, true. That that is that is the whole thing. There is something that is not not right. There is lies going being told, and whatever the reason it is, uh, it's it, you want to know what the, the American people are are suffering. Amen. You want to know what the reason? It's is? time for the meek to inherit oh, the I, earth. That's my thing. I'd love to know the reason. You're in a coup. A coup? Yeah, could be. Yeah, I know it could be. They already announced it. England announced it. They came out and said Trump, everybody has to rally around, do it because he can't. That's why the stem cell cure was outlawed, because they're in charge of the CDC, FDA, mm -hmm. the Internet. They run it all. Well, I'm sure you're right. They, I know. I have inside information. I know what's everything that's going on. Uh, <laughs> Q's, been been taken over. Q's been taken over and doesn't have the true word anymore. I've also heard that, too, and I've seen some of his stuff, and I, I kind of believe that. <laughs> but a lot of people still follow Q on, you know. Yeah, yeah but well, they're going to turn again. Well, I'll know the truth in, a, in like a year or two or three. 
or never. Or never. Well, we may we, yeah. we may never because of the fact whatever that whatever, that, whatever that truth that. is, we we're going to live through all that crap anyway. You know, <laughs> yeah. Are I you mean, and then are you, what are we going to do gonna about it? Say are you going to let them put the tax? Say again. I said, are you going to let them put the digital tattoo on you? It literally puts an ink mark on, and then it puts ten or nine thousand micro nano chips in you. I know. This is you know so we've actually discussed that not on the show, but we we've actually discussed that, and there ain't no way in hell they're going to put a chip on me. Are you going to let them put that ink? <laughs> are you going to let them put ink on you? No. Because in three weeks they're coming to your house, and they're going to mandatory search for three days. Everybody that isn't in your house. They're going to make you get this test. They're going to ban you, put the tattoo on you, and then they're going to categorize you. See, that's and if you what, voted that, you're saying in three weeks that's going to happen? That's not going to that? happen. No, not going to happen. They already released the date. What do you mean it's not going to happen? They already released the date. Uh, that's where I head for Alaska. <laughs> okay. I got people there. They can't okay. even get checks to every American in the country in three weeks. How are they going to do that? <laughs> 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 Well, Here's the bad the thing. thing about it is, is the people who are dry, the, the people, the dark side of it is in the dark government does a lot of things faster than anything else can because yeah, exactly. they hold all the money. Right. So they're, they're, holding, they're holding all the money and they're holding all the deal. So that when the dark side the decides to move. The same way has a patent on the virus, the same way the nano engineered, the same way the, they are, China already came out with a document saying that they were engineered it for a deep state contract. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is out. Uh, England declared declaration of war on China. Okay, but if you look at a, a virus, all right. So we've had, let's say, we've had two other major viruses that nobody's ever really thought about or talked about because it doesn't affect the human species. Okay, we yeah, had, but you didn't get a tattoo and Bill Gates didn't patent it and this wasn't the end time and the seven seals and all the time and the prophecy, the seal, the blue star in the sky, the 29th, Trump being the Gabriel, Trump Harold, wins in a map of prophecies. People look at the 3D map and they can't see because they think flat earth. They don't understand you're in a digital world. You right. can't perceive and conceive what the realities are. Because you you can't understand that human is just a perception experience. You're in a forge. You're in a test. The test is stop being a watcher. Certain people on here know the truth. Certain now, people here's, are here's the thing. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna switch gears here because uh, we'll see what happens in three weeks, and we'll talk about this in three weeks. Mm -hmm. But right. I do want to I want I want to move the show along because uh, I don't want to turn this all into a conspiracy show tonight. It's roundtable. So, but Jason, the question what's your was, question what the answer was, are you going to get the tattoo? Because they've already announced everybody gets, everybody's getting one. Oh, I already got said. They, they ain't giving me no goddamn tattoo. They can kiss my ass. There you go. What are you going to do? Huh? What are you going to do then? You're going to go on the FEMA work camp. They've already got people working. Dude, I'm not worried about a FEMA work camp. <clears throat> yeah. Well, you know, the biggest part about I'm it is... So this is just a question I'm just asking for all the American people out there that are listening going, well, how are you going to get out of it? What are you going to walk out of line? And the soldier goes, you can't get out of line. Oh, that's right. So what do you do? You know what? You I become guess that what... other statistic in that book that says, hey, guess what? You died of the coronavirus. Yeah. That's what you uh, do. Right. Honestly, there ain't nothing yeah. else you can do about it. Honestly, um, here's the deal. I guess I'm going to die. No, here's yeah. the deal. That's What's going to happen is we're going to have another American Civil War. What am I going to do? Well, you're going to unite. You're going to get people together, Get have a parlay, have emissaries get together, have people get communication before they cut the power and eliminate things that they're going to do. Demolition, man. Here's yeah. the thing. Nobody's going to have an American Civil War 2.0. So here's the deal. I, I've been accused of leading a militia in the past, uh, so I guess that will become reality. Because, uh, yeah. But here's the thing. thing. We might be the Civil War 2.0. Absolutely. Because you know what? If they tried doing that shit, there would be a Civil no, War. This country is yeah, running off a three, no, what, 400-year-old document? Right. Did you know, did you know you're under a cruise embargo? There's no more resupply in three weeks. They've already started to, to 
tell you that there's no rash. They're going to be rationing, and it's going to be non-essential. So it's what they choose. Do you know that's coming? I bet Who's you don't know. Who's they? Who are you talking about? <laughs> Who's they? The people is that run the government now. They're called the deep state. The ones that run the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when it comes to the stock state. market, I don't trust insider trading because no one knows the exactly what's going to happen. When it comes to conspiracy theory, I don't trust inside information because there's no research behind it. Not no. really. No one actually well, went out and did what actual research is. They read I really like documentation. They yeah, there is like no how they documentation. Talk. How there China is announced reading a into contract a book and using about how their they own read these documents. Oh there my is God. someone reading it yeah. into their own information on a book. A well, book. Look at the documents. They're out there. They've released them yeah, themselves. And Wikipedia has documents too, but I don't trust half of that yeah. shit either. Not Did you realize that in 19. Early. We're talking about the Bill Gates Foundation. You don't think he patented it? He has the patent on the coronavirus cure. And the gene, the nanotechnology, he holds the patent on it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I've never seen that. I've no, I've looked okay. at lots and lots of science on this, and I have never seen that. I actually have a patent number somewhere. You make it not real because you say it doesn't. You don't understand it or never heard of it. So here's the yeah, deal. This is roundtable tonight. We're not going to make this yeah. a conspiracy show tonight. Let's go to the next question. Jason, Yay. what's your first question tonight? What's that? What's your first question tonight? Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'd like. To, do you get any callers in too? Are Are you, did, you getting any callers to come in? Because so one question would be for a channeler to call in because I want some information. But two. Okay, we don't. So uh, we don't have. We don't do call-ins on the show. Got. Yeah. Okay, so there we. All right, well then, let's see. What do you know about Obama getting caught in a hotel with a transvestite on meth saying he was black? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that Michelle but Obama? You all heard about it, right? You all know yeah. it's true, right? But it's not in the media, except when it was reported. And it was all fact. I don't know it's true. Everything. I'm you sorry, know, I don't know it's you true. Know, you're it's, I don't, you don't know, 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 but Bruce true, but Jenner was pretty happy that day, so who knows? <laughs> Again, just because you don't believe in fire doesn't make it not cook and burn. It still works. Mm. So these things exist. Go look them up right now. Hit Google. It's there. <laughs> it's just not being reported on. So Jason, but, uh, so, so Jason, what's your first had, question tonight? Yeah, comment on that. Was that the answer? Because we can move on. Let's move on. Let's move okay. on. All right. Hmm. <laughs> because you did say conspiracies. I was just wondering. Oh, uh, what kind? Of, so this remember, isn't a. Here's the thing. What, what conspiracy? You know about the monkey? Huh? Okay, here you go. What do you know about the hundred monkey effect? The hundred monkey effect. What's the what's the hundred monkey effect? That's a good. The hundred monkey effects where the government takes a hundred and one people, and when they teach them something, it automatically downloads into the species. This is fact. And okay, that is what, the hundred monkey effect. That what, is what, the hundred monkey. What effect. have you heard about the hundred monkey effect, Barry? <laughs> the monkey 100, or 100, any species, and yeah, once 100. you make learn one thing, a hundred and one creatures. It only takes one hundred, but they do a hundred and one. And when that 100 masters that one thing, it's down. In, in response to that one, it only takes one. It well, wouldn't take 100. 101. As soon as somebody understands it's something. It's made up of 101, but when 100 species of in a species, it downloads to the entire species. No matter the other, they can be isolated from each other. Okay. Just I'm going to be left. that asshole hold, hold that says this. Do you plan on letting anybody else state their opinions, or are you just going to talk the entire fucking show? Yeah, Nathaniel, I got to explain well, this to you. It's a radio show. If you ask yeah. a question, you got to yeah. give chance for a response. If you can't, well, I'm not even here. What do you say? Yeah, the, I didn't hear what know. he said. It cut out. Yeah. Well, well, on the hunter monkey effect, you know what it was? It was a scientific experiment where they took monkeys to an island and 
uh, it was all Sandy Island and everything else, and the monkeys were eating all the Sandy food and everything else. What one monkey did is it took its food down to the water and washed it. The other monkeys mm-hmm. started copying that same thing, so all the monkeys washed their things. And that's uh, how it started. And, and that's, that's how it started. Then what happened is that they took the 100 monkeys off and brought 100 <coughs> new monkeys in there, and as soon as they did, all those monkeys started washing their food. Right. And they elaborated and took it into a duplicatable experiment. In exactly. Right. And then they found out the same way placebo works is prayer on cancer cells, they turn into white blood cells every time. True. Yes. But, you know, that's that, that's part of an experiment. It's part of the thing. You know, that's that's you know it, it is a true thing. The 100 monkey effect is a true thing. And, and it that's does come out how they're treating people with infrasound and 5G and how everything's tied in, how 5G turns off your, inf- your immune system. And, again, what do you know about Elon Musk? Remember how he was talking about against AI and how he made the kiosk to put the chips in you? And you don't need Google Glasses because you're in the you are in the cloud. Yeah, the, the thing know, that scares me about Elon like Musk in California that already got it in on, he's yeah. got it himself. In. Yeah, SpaceX bothers me about Elon Musk. When you put twelve thousand things up to the internet all over the United States, and that's your goal. There's something that's there's something that's pretty wrong about that we're cluttering the air with a bunch of stuff that's going out there you know for ufo cases and everything else we get a lot of the what we see the ufo what, the, what they call the spacex trains now because he's putting up 50 to 60 of them at a time and they're still going around in orbit all over the place which is causing a lot of false uh reports because people think that there's an evasion going on you know they don't know they don't even know about spacex they don't know about that type of situation because that's what can run through rampant in people's minds they'll start reporting and saying golly i just saw a complete fleet of ufos all in a line flying across the thing but it's actually a leon Musk's uh space link in spacex that's puts all these things up there so you know it's 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 how the people realize yeah all right so jason but let's move on yeah yeah Jason, you still with us? Yeah. All right. What's what's your first question tonight? I thought I had a couple. Hmm. Yeah, I had several. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get away from conspiracy. I think we've heard more. I think we've heard more conspiracy tonight than, uh, yeah, no. (laughs) So we'll see what happens in three weeks. Well, there's several different things. One's three and a half and one's four weeks. They changed the thing, but they did announce, just like they said they changed the time that they're going to announce everywhere in five weeks that a year and three months, that's the next countdown to everybody's in their house. And everybody has to get a vaccination before you can do all these good work. They're just implementing. This is a this is a the script that it's all been going by. You know, you got to eventually when they're knocking on your door, it's too late. But you got to kind of see it happening and do something about it before that. I mean, you got to before the tattoo hits you. I mean, come on. Well, okay, but here's the thing. I'm not worried about the market of beasts. You see, the 666 is, first of all, every barcode starts with 666. Your, your, your social security, everybody's already got that. We're not worried about that. I'm just saying, now they're coming with their plan, and their agenda got implemented beyond their, it was an accident. They didn't plan this. It happened a year early. So they're scrambling. So they're going to implement all their shit ahead of time, and they're going to, the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, this is part of it, too. Hmm. Who knows anything about that? Well, but here's the deal. That's We've been why, trying to get away from conspiracy for a little bit, get back in more to more paranormal. Do you have a question about the, the paranormal? Uh Okay. <laughs> hmm. About the paranormal, let's see. Okay, Joe, what's your second question? Joe, you still with us? Oh, me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
I was still wondering about the guys coming to my house to tattoo me. I, <laughs> I, I kind of got lost there a minute. Just ask him for a uh, car tattoo. It'll be fine. Well, yeah. Everybody gets a tattoo. Everybody. Nobody. Yeah, if if someone comes to my house to give me a tattoo, it's going to be a bloodbath. So. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll <laughs> point you a stick with you. Point you sticks <laughs> yeah. galore. Tell you what. Uh, yeah. Let's. Let's jump back into the paranormal here. I'll ask a real simple one. After all this, it's, it's kind of simple. There we go. Um, if you were, if you could be any kind of cryptid, what cryptid would you be, and why? <laughs> you know what? Hands down, oh, Bigfoot. Because oh. Bigfoot's the best social distancer there is out there. Exactly. That's what I'm gonna say. That's. I'll give my answer first. I'd be Bigfoot because I wouldn't have to move. Exactly. I'm right here in the woods. I wouldn't have. You know. I'm set. <laughs> Absolutely. I have to clarify something first. Is Chupacabra from Mexico? Yes. No, it's from Puerto Rico. Yeah. Oh, Do they have okay. tequila in Puerto Rico? <laughs> <laughs> they have rum. You know what? I'm going to be Chupacabra. <laughs> they got rum. Priorities. Yeah, but you'll be called a coyote with mange. I'll be drunk. I don't care. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> The Puerto Rico chupacabra is a lot different looking than the Texas and the really? and the Mexican. Exactly. Uh, uh, you know, you got a hairless, uh, uh, four-legged animal compared to the uh, two-legged, short-armed, uh, weird uh, blood sucker that they call the chupacabra in uh, Puerto Rico. Two different things. I'm just saying. So, which chupacabra would you worse. be? I've been called a lot worse than a bloodsucker when I've been so great. <laughs> oh. Oh. What about you, Barry? What would you be? Um, I would have to, uh, you know, I would either be a um, a wolver or a Bigfoot, something like that, a uh, uh, a dog man or a, uh, a Bigfoot. Ooh. And... <laughs> Uh, it, it's because of the fact that uh, I, 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 my belief of them, they are protectors. They're very highly spiritual. They're very highly um, uh, also interdimensional. That, that, that's my own personal belief to it. Right. And uh, they have a uh, uh, a wonderful way about themselves as far as how they uh, look and uh, socialize and do the things that they do. They take care of their families. It's very it's very uh, major. You know, the people who have seen it, you know, they, they do run in what we would say a, not not a pack, well, wolvers or a dog man were running in a pack, but the big Bigfoot basically has a clan, you know, and they have, you know, people who have studied Bigfoot and everything else know that there are uh, younger um, uh, Bigfoot, the infants, and there's uh, the adolescents, and there's also uh, the older ones, and and then they have the more um, uh, the grandpas and the grandmas roaming around also. So it's it's this complete social structure. And, I think uh, I think it's cool that you know when you talk about Bigfoot families, yeah, they have family structures. Oh yeah, they do definitely. Uh, you know, our, our initial, so the, the, uh, the initial Bigfoot investigator we had on our team was uh, Tyler, and he actually interacted with Bigfoot families up here, up in yes, the, ba the Baker uh, Lake area. There, there's you know, a lot of people that do, but, but they pick the people that they communicate with. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just that, you know, you have to be of a certain spiritual being to be able to be able to communicate with a Bigfoot. You know, they're not gonna. Uh, you have to build a trust in that in that range, and they and they communicate via uh, telepathy with them, and then they also make different sounds, and you know, which some of these people are able to pick up what they do, and they they come and they give you gifts, they give you these things that are um, out there. It's been as far as I'm concerned, throughout the studies and everything else, it's been pretty well proven that yes, there are some people in this this country and where Bigfoots are, that they are uh, in the area. They're kind of a protector for them. They, they come up to them they'll, and they, they like them being there. Other people, they don't like getting into there. And one of the things about it is, is like we were talking to somebody this week and we were talking about 
you know, I don't know how many times you've been in the woods and you've heard that big thump in, into the ground. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, what that is is that is nothing but a warning kind of going, hey, uh, we don't want you here right now. It, but, you know, what happens is, is people get stupid. They say, well, what was that? And they keep going to what they're <laughs> doing. And then all of a sudden they get another one and another one, and then they're going to go like, wow, why is that rock being thrown at me? <laughs> you know, you, you know yeah. Me, and, uh, you know, excuse me. That, I don't want that. To that all right. goes for the people that go up into the woods looking for them and hunting around in areas they shouldn't be. Absolutely. And me, I live right in the middle of it. I live right in the middle of it, and I hear them. And I, I can hear them go through the woods. It sounds. I'll hear hooting like owls. Yeah, except exactly. these owls got to be eight, nine hundred pounds, <laughs> and I'll hear five or six of them. <laughs> From different areas, and they'll go through. All, I can hear them coming up the valley, going through the area, and they go right by my place and off into the woods. I can. It'll take a while, but they're hooting back and forth, mm -hmm. and I've kind of got to deal with them. It's like you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. I let them know that, and they've never bothered me. Yeah, and that's and that's the best way. You know, if you start getting bothersome with them, they're gonna they're gonna say, "Hey, we know you're here," you know, and they may be very uh social with you they they may come in on, on your property be around there because they know that it's a safe zone you have a good attitude towards them and then they're just going to let let it go and yeah they have so many different calls you know from crow to coyote to owl to all these different sounds and everything else that they that they project and you know that's what's weird about some people who just go out there they go oh that's a, that was an owl I got news for you. When you you know, there's different owl sounds and there's different <laughs> different things, man. But let me tell you something. Uh, Bigfoot does a little owl a little different than other things. And it just it's just your education and knowing what uh, what to expect and what you, what you're going to be in the woods. And a lot of people don't understand that. And, and I haven't heard the the, the howls yet. Um, you know, because we have Bigfoot in our backyard, but usually what I hear are the just the tree knocks. And what's interesting is, uh, you know, when Markham was up, what, two years ago, I guess now, it was his first time hearing the knock, but that was a very unique knock, and it had tone to it. I've mm -hmm. never heard that again. That was the first time. Um, but it makes me wonder if they use tone for language. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, it's like hoops. Uh, you, you'll hear them hoop. You'll hear them. Uh, and a yell is like nothing you're going to, I mean, it, it will make your hair stand up. I know there's some people here on the panel that are military, and you know you go through the woods and you go through an area, you don't necessarily want to hear everybody, you don't want them to know you're there, but you got to communicate with the other people that are right. spread out. Right. And they're great at it. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Francie and Kayla, I don't think we got an answer from you two. Nope. I would be some kind of a wolf. Like a dire wolf? Um, dog man yeah. or a wolf? I don't, well, I wouldn't be a dog man. <laughs> okay, dog woman or wolf? <laughs> yeah, dog woman. Is dog broad politically acceptable? <laughs> yeah, that is totally fine. Cool. I just, I think that would be just amazing. Be, and I like the, the, the family, you know, they're oriented family. They have order, and I like that. Absolutely. Kayla? <laughs> um, I would either be a thunderbird or a rake. Ooh. Oh. A rake. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. I like your first choice. The second one's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From Thunderbird was, to Rake is a long yeah. difference apart. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. I, I've always had a thing for Thunderbirds. I, I I love Thunderbirds. I think they're the coolest stuff. But a Rake, I mean, come on, man. To figure out what they actually are, where they actually go, what they actually do, yeah, I, I would love to... Be able you, to it, be part of that for just like a day or two. What if you became a rake and <laughs> didn't like what you were, and then you're stuck? Yeah. Well, then Bart, I would just... find a gin, and he could. <laughs> well, yeah, so yeah. here's yeah. the deal. My answer was kind of a joke, um, but even before I was part of the paranormal, I have always loved Anne Rice's take on 
vampires. Vampires. Yeah. Oh my god. It has <laughs> I've always said if if that's real, I want in. Oh, that's you. why if I carry I pointy back. sticks everywhere I go. Oh, and it's kind of, <laughs> hey, it's kind of a joke, but at the same time, I'm kind of serious because in her very vision of vampires, they automatically lose all unhealthy tributes. Okay. I'd be skinny for the first time ever. <laughs> okay. And they have great hair. And oh. yeah, great hair. Like, how can I beat that? Oh, <laughs> killing and people and sucking their blood. Maybe. Right. <laughs> what, what about you, Jason? I guess a skinwalker. Skinwalker? Okay. Yep. Best of both all worlds, pretty much. Yeah, it really it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is. Pictures. So for every paranormal investigator out there is trying to kill you, but <laughs> I guess that's for all of us except for Bigfoot. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, no, they're trying to kill Bigfoot too. They had a TV show, I remember. That's true. You're um, fine if you're a skinwalker as long as you stay off the ranch where everybody goes. Right. <laughs> and that, that's true too. If you're um, if you're the Netflix version of Bigfoot. That Sam Elliott guy already did it. Oh my well, yeah, supposedly. Oh my God. After he killed Hitler. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, no conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, What's a rake's bear? Huh? Lisa's talking in here about a rake's bear. Well, uh, no, Barry is bear. She's talking to bear. Uh, bear. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hi, bear. Yeah. Lisa, Hi, Lisa. You guys, you How you doing? About, uh, rakes on uh, Into the Fire, uh, Barry. Oh, yeah, we, we... some of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we had a new cryptid. Damn it. <laughs> hey, the rake, the rake bear. Well, well, the Kentucky now has a bearzilla uh, that they're working on now. Yes! But, yes, <laughs> you know, so. Uh, but, hey, uh, hey, hey, wait a minute. We got some Kentucky people here. I want to hear yeah. about the Kentucky uh, zilla, the bearzilla. But, um... <laughs> Being we have some Kentucky people here, I want to hear about the Kentucky Goblins. Hmm. The Kentucky Goblins. That is from uh, 1955, and that is from uh, it's a UFO, famous UFO case yeah. in Kelly, Kentucky. Yeah. And uh, the Dang Sutton family, uh, Lucky Sutton and them, are there. We have a big festival every year. It's normally uh, around the end of August. Uh, over in uh, Hopkinsville, uh, it's very close to That's Kelly, Kentucky. Case. Yeah, um, and uh, Jody Sutton has been two great books on it. She's part of the family, and uh, I would suggest if anybody is looking for anything on the uh, on the Kentucky Goblins, that's the best source uh, there. I, I think She's that one super is, super lady. That but, one intrigues me the most because they actually shot at those with shotguns, and they just kind of did somersaults and <laughs> whatever. And you know. right, exactly. <laughs> you know, and uh, there was were they ETs? Were, yeah. Was there a craft? Yeah. Well, there was, there actually was a craft, uh, and one of the things that we uh, I think it was about uh, what was it a few weeks ago we were talking about. Uh, on the show, uh, that uh, when they opened up the uh, the the property for the first time, which was the year 2017, when the uh, eclipse came through, uh, they actually were able to open the thing. And as they were coming back, uh, they were pointing out that this is where the craft landed. This is where it was where where it was at. Uh, and some people would love to go to that area, but. Yeah, there is a story of a craft being uh, seen and also on the ground there. Um, it is, uh, you know, when uh, Hilliard came out, they tried to combine the two, you know, <laughs> which uh, I think is really uh, strange. Uh, but there are caves, you know, there are caves in that area and everything else, and there is a cave creature that's running around Kentucky that is kind of... Uh, uh, short and uh, uh, all little little thing that kind of looks like that. Uh, it's been seen quite a lot. Uh, that was the whole basis about the movie Hilliard. Uh, but uh, you know, we've we've seen and uh, I've investigated that area pretty well. And there, there, it's a very dangerous area. And one of the things we have here, you know, when you look at Pilatus and you look at all the other things that he's done, and four one one and uh, missing. Um, 
you know, there are things here in the cave systems and everything else because, you know, we're right here by Mammoth, we're on the 37th parallel. Uh, it, it's, it's quite a scary little place when you really start to think about it. And uh, there are so many um, unknown factors, but half the missing, you know, when you look at missing people and you look at the national parks and national forests, uh, there are things here that are going to eat you. There's things that are going to take you. And there's, you know, and and sorry about that. That's just the way that it is. And, uh, you know, uh, it's it, it's here. It's here. And you know, uh, like rakes, uh, there are rakes. We've we've had rake activity in this area. Uh, there's so many different types of what we consider to be cryptos in this area. Plus, we've had mysterious animal killings of of uh children uh women ladies uh animals uh you know small uh ponies that have been picked up thrown in water just 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 to be killed you know and uh there are different uh, uh stories there's been even in uh, land land between lakes the lbls there was dogman killings there where they uh still to this day believe that dogman killed uh a family and a trailer, uh, a uh, a recreational trailer there. Well, so you got those uh, the lights at the Big Bone Lick State Park too. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have quite a lot of different things in Kentucky, and and Kentucky is one of the paranormal, uh, what I, I like to call the hot spot uh, of 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 the paranormal. Uh, West Virginia and everything coming down the. Uh, Appalachians and everything else is all filled with different stuff, but uh, oh, the Appalachians you know. alone has its own clusters. Of yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and, and 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 it goes to the vampiric side also. You know, you mentioned vampires. Uh, <laughs> some of that is more into that vampiric side. They are, you know, they are the feasty type of thing. So, right. Have you ever done anything around the battlefields? Uh, yeah, I've been to a lot of the battlefields um, around. I the, looked at a house one time right next to the Perryville battlefield. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, to buy. And it was the weirdest. I, I'm not, I don't pick up on stuff. I get feelings, but I don't see anything. I know that house is haunted just because of the way it felt. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I mean, well, the Silver War area in this area here has tons of hauntings, and I, uh, I work, uh, I volunteer for a museum, and uh, have for several years. It's a paranormal playhouse, if you will. Uh, it has a lot of different paranormal things. It's called Octave Home Museum, where nine thousand Confederate soldiers were brought there uh, oh, after wow. after battle. Uh, a lot of them had surgeries and were. Uh, um, a lot of people didn't make it out of there. 5,000 Union soldiers came later. Uh, you know, there's a lot of area that's been stained with a lot of different death and a lot of stuff here in Kentucky, Tennessee, in this area. And uh, uh, it all makes a, uh, a hodgepodge of paranormal. It's a great place to come, you know. So just before we go on our uh, last break, a little bit of clarification. When you say Bearzilla, does that mean like half bear, half lizard? Uh, what it is is actually uh, they 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 nicknamed it Bearzilla. It's kind of like uh, I look at it more as almost like a werewolf type type ordeal, uh, a dog dog man. But uh, they've compared it to a large uh, part part bear part uh, part dog, you know, and they call it they 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 call it Bearzilla. I think um, I saw that on Mountain Monsters. They had an episode. Uh, well, Mountain Monsters did a, did a thing in West Virginia where they actually, that was actually a large uh, bear creature. And uh, being from West Virginia, I've actually heard of that. You know, some of the stuff that is, uh, they get a pretty bad, they get a pretty bad rap, but there are some things like the Yahoo and some of the things that they do talk about. And, you know, we also have Sheep Squatch here in certain areas of Kentucky, uh, which is basically a squatch that has a sheep style ram head very uh, agitated 
uh, got a real bad attitude. <laughs> Do you think that Bearzilla you know. could just be a shaved bear? Have you guys ever seen a shaved bear? They're the scariest looking things. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, this Skin thing's actually pigs. hairy. This one's this one's actually hairy and everything else. But oh, I, okay. you know, I, right. but but I I kind of look at it as more of a, a werewolf or uh, a rogue uh, dog dog man type thing. You know. Yeah, when bear. you first mentioned uh, it, I was thinking it was just a giant bear. Mm -hmm. Which that's scary enough. Like mammoth sized bear. Yeah, I mean yeah. I, I have bears in my front yard sometimes, so if I see one the size of a semi truck, that's <laughs> 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 Oh, as long as it doesn't have a rainbow you painted on it, dick. I'm okay. What? <laughs> as long as it doesn't have horns, Skinless. I'm okay. Yeah. So well, it I, shows me his bacon. So no, I used to <laughs> oh, no, so I used to work at a slaughterhouse. And I walked into the uh, the meat locker because uh, I did the cleanup. And, oh my God, if you've ever seen a, a pig with its skin off, it looks like an alien. I swear to God. It, yeah, <laughs> just, no. <laughs> Me and you worked in the same slaughterhouse, so I know exactly what uh -huh. you're talking about. Yeah. Skinless <laughs> pigs? <laughs> yeah, no. So anyway, we're going to our last break of the night, and when we come back... Francie, you're going to ask the next question. So, no, I'm not, because I'm leaving. Oh, you're leaving. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Joe, if you shave a bear, I want video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. We haven't, we haven't talked about to Barry it. yet. Barry, you haven't, had, you haven't asked your first question yet. <laughs> so, Barry, you're, 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 you're up to the shoot next. All right. Sounds like a deal. All right. Here is Hell Within from Crypt Amnesia. You are listening to S4 on Spreaker.com
Welcome back to Explore with your host, Eric Cooper. Welcome back to S4. No, oh, wow, it's been a uh, a lively roundtable tonight. Yeehaw. <laughs> I, I want to do some. Uh, I well, wanna... Thank you, Francie Miller. Um, she unfortunately had to go yep, at, during the second hour. Um, so did Nathaniel Romo. So, um, thanks, guys. Yeah, uh, thanks uh, for coming uh, on. But I want to clarify something. And, uh, I love conspiracy theories. Uh, we do conspiracy topics on this show. But what I want to clarify is. When you have to walk the line between a conspiracy theory and something that's unverifiable, but kind of lends towards the side of fear mongering, that's where I have to watch that line. Uh, we have enough fear mongering with our own media, um, with our own government, about a lot of stuff going on today. Uh, I don't want to, you know, for example, our own community. I've got people sending me pictures of the National Guard. National Guard are here for logistics, for medical uh, assistance, uh, <coughs> supply runs, things of that nature. Being military, no, the National Guard's not here to, to round people up and take them to people. American people. soldiers are not going to shoot American citizens. Absolutely not. You know, wow. and you, you, you do have that, you, you have that fear. You know, I asked my soldiers, God, long, long ago, because... This topic came up before I was even doing S4. But I asked my own soldiers, you know, okay, so we're in a riot. We have people throwing bricks at us. Are we going to shoot our own people? Hell no. Now, they pull out guns, that changes the whole paradigm. No, it's not, now you're threatening my life. That's where the line is. If we have to go to a protest, a riot, and they're throwing, they're throwing rocks and, and crap at us, we're going to detain we're going we're gonna to do what we have to do, but we're not going to kill our own. That's where the military stands. Now, you do have the crazy. You, you know, some people join the military because, well, they're, they're just not right in the head and they just want to kill people. That's where you have to watch that line. But for Sometimes the most part... make the best soldiers too, though. Well, they can. For certain. So but then you have, things. you know, uh, there, there's war crimes for a reason. Our soldiers don't get thrown in prison for doing their job in, in in war, they don't. Now, when doing your job in war leads to you going into an Afghanistan village and just killing people at random, that's a war crime. That's where they go to prison. That's where the line is. But us keep being in a convoy and uh, catching an Iraqi setting up a, a an IED in the middle of a road, and you shoot him, that's part of your job. Bottom line. Regardless of the rules of engagement, it's just your life or theirs. Well, that's where the line is. I'm still concentrating on Joe trying to shave a bear. Seriously, <laughs> like Joe, what are you gonna do with it afterwards? You got to keep it warm somehow. You gonna cuddle, dude? Make a bear pillow. Hold my beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fam yeah. Famous last words. Hold my beer. Yeah. All right, Hold my beer. Barry. What's your first question tonight? Because I'm sorry, we didn't get to you. Oh, that's. <laughs> That's cool, and uh, I was talking about uh, uh, giants and everything else, and, uh, and uh, I'd, I'd love to ask people about uh, why do you think that the, you know, there's been ideas, there's been a lot of things in the U in the United States, and it may be, I don't want to get back into a conspiracy thing, but if you look at some of the things where we know for a fact there's been uh, giant people found, it seems like they try to uh, well, we've done cases on everything else. Uh, there's no other realm about it. What do you think the, what, what's your opinion about, first of all, other kinds of creatures that have been here and why would they try to, uh, keep it away from, uh, normal everyday citizens because you can't find the bodies or anything else. So as far as I know, the Smithsonian, Cambridge can come out and do digs since the 1800s and supposedly have these bones, but no one can find them and nobody can see them. I'll take a stab at that. Um, yeah, you're a and geologist. I'm just coming, yeah, I'm a geologist, and I'll come at it from someone that I actually was on official digs for I did three years up in Montana and in Colorado. Um, 
digging up bones. And, you know, it was one of those things. Uh, I was I had a bet with the, the guy that was running the program out of Harvard. And I said, look, man, if I find a human bones in with these dinosaurs, you owe me a case of uh, Jack Daniels. And he said, <laughs> right. fine, we'll do that. Um, but uh, the bones, they have been found. I know that. It, it, they have been found, and they have been covered up. I don't know why. I mean, when you come to speculate on what motivation is for hiding things, you can go, well, it could be religious things. It could be uh, some secret organization that doesn't want anybody to know. Or, But who knows why they're hiding it, but they have hidden it. The giants existed. They're, the giants are in almost every culture around the world. People talked about them. Mm -hmm. And they used almost the same word. Giants, I mean, in all the different languages, it's very similar. So these things existed. They were there. And some people say there might even still be some down yeah, in Papua that's... New Guinea in those areas. True. Yeah, that's, a, that's one of the things that I've... And we don't know what's in some of the cave systems to this day. Well, the thing exactly. is, too, how much landmass is now underwater from the oceans when the Earth was one landmass before it became a lot of bridge, it. you know. So who's to say there's a lot of giant bones that couldn't be, you know, under the ocean now? Now, we won't find until we actually start, you know, excavating underneath water. Um, well, well, you know, those stories back... Back. You know, it's it's odd when we look at, you know, we're we're taught a certain way, teachings and everything else of our history. They, they make their own history. It's like, okay, Columbus came here in 1492 or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you have, if you find a bunch of uh, uh, Vikings that were here in 1300, that that doesn't fit the fit the group. Then basically they found it. Or if you find giants here or if you find even in you know the story in the early 1900s you being a geologist you know that in the, the Grand Canyon uh, they did find artifacts from Egypt uh, and that was immediately closed off in that area yes, this, they did that that area to this day even though it's a national park we cannot go in that area mm-hmm I mean, that's kind of like, I'm, okay, so what's the, what's the deal on that? Oh, my, I guess my question would be, what's the reason for hiding it? I mean. Mine too. <laughs> you know, yeah, and you're absolutely, absolutely right in the chat, Joe, with an uh, is just another, another word for giant. Um, it, you know, it, I don't see it being a detractor from religion. Um. I guess it could. It, they talk about Nephilim in the Bible. Nephilim is a giant. So I, if anything, it would help prove religion. So why hide it? Uh, it wouldn't necessarily help prove religion. Well, um, religious text. It would validate religious text. Yes, but if you notice that there's a lot of religious text that goes against its own religious thought. <laughs> um, so as far as... The religious text in the Bible stating about giants, uh, they were the sons and daughters of gods. So if we are to believe that there's only one God based on the Bible stories, yeah, that's true. then them being the sons and daughters of gods would go in conflict with the fact that there's only one God. <laughs> True, and but we all know that there were and that each culture supported and did their own gods, and they may have been, you know, uh, uh, here, you know, and that that was the way that uh, it is, and and who says through the consciousness that they are still not a part of uh, that conscious uh, mind? You know, we talked about consciousness. Uh, and subconsciousness uh, mm -hmm. before, and I kind of do believe that. I believe that these things still do exist, and they are out there. You know. Oh, I, I honestly believe that every creature, every every living creature ever, is part of subconscious and conscious mind. I, True. But, uh, when we're talking about giants, I think that the issue with that 
is then that would go against a lot of our thought processes if they were to say hey these giants are real let's show you the bones uh, then you'd have a lot of different <laughs> groups of people <laughs> uh, fighting amongst themselves about the difference between uh, Darwin's theory of evolution versus the Bible versus this person's beliefs versus and I think them hiding it is them trying to think of a way to keep from having those issues come up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, it's just kind of like this. If they hide that, what else are they going to hide? Oh, absolutely. You know? absolutely. I mean, I mean, you look at like, you look at the UFO things. You know, uh, Eric mentioned uh, the sack bases. You know, seventy three through seventy five. Man, every sack base in the United States was visited by UFOs. Right. And and still to this day, I mean, all the flaps. But you don't hear anybody talking about that. We always go back to Roswell. You know, it's like yeah. let's talk about Roswell. And the thing is, yeah. is that everybody sits there and they say, like, oh, man, I would love to know all the secrets of the government or this or that. Me, personally, hmm. I would love to know the secrets that are in the vaults of the underground of the Vatican. I mean, right. oh, if we're going to go to that, th those yeah, are the yeah, ones that I'm going to. Yeah, so, yeah. So that Dennis, means the Vatican any day. <laughs> so Dennis does they have, have giants point. in the vaults under the Vatican. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised. But Dennis has a question. Uh, so are the gi giant fossilized footprint that was found in Lavotsky, Russia, is that real or not? Is that the one on the rock in Russia? Do you know anything about that, Joe? Uh, there was a dinosaur that had a footprint that would look like a giant footprint. And I don't know about the particular <laughs> ones in Russia, but I know they found some in Texas and they went, oh, look, these are human footprints along with uh, tracks of brontosaurus. But, no, it was, a, it was a just an upright, walking, bipedal uh, dinosaur. But I don't know about those particular prints. And he mentions uh, one of Russia. those Ping, Pingyin Village, China. Oh, okay, so the giant uh, uh, rock, basically. It's, I think it's some kind of an igneous stone that has a giant footprint pushed into the side of it. It, it would be, it wouldn't be igneous that no one's going to oh, no. step on anything hot but, and it, I mean, no, it wouldn't I'm, leave a I'm print. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, uh, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, you know, anything walks along like say a riverbed. Um, there's a lot of them in Texas and mm -hmm. the riverbed gets covered over and over lots of years, it eventually gets uncovered and there's the prints. You know, were they giants? Were they something else? Who knows? Oh, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, and you're right. We we don't really know what what they could be. You know, it's, we haven't discovered all of what was walking around in the prehistoric days. Exactly. You know? We've only yeah. got a very small percentage, small percentage of, of it. I, I can, you know. I can remember you know, pulling out bones and people going, oh, what, what is that? What is that? And then the guys would get all excited about it, all the paleontologists, and I'd say, hey, I just find the damn things. I'm hey, going to ask uh, you an awkward question. Do you think that Bigfoot is what they would have considered a giant? That's possible. Could be, yeah. I mean, we got the, uh, uh, like, I'm, I'm out here on the West Coast, but I know back in East, the mound builders, a lot of the yes. mounds, they said mm -hmm. a lot of that had to do with giants. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them you can't go into now. A lot of them that were broken into, the things they found disappeared. Smithsonian mm -hmm. disappeared them. Yes, they did. Um, they, there's they, Catalina they Island off the west coast here. They found them out there. Who's yeah. to say with, with shrinking? Because Dennis is saying, yeah, everything was way you know larger way back then. Who's to say we're not the giants from back then? We just shrunk. Well, and I well, mean, if you go with that theory, if, then that would be why they are hiding it from us. <laughs> well, if you look at it, if you look at it from what the mound builders and everything else, a lot of the uh, Native Americans here dealt with, and some of them lived with them. And just like anything, some th there was battles between some of them. There's good, there's bad, you know. Mm. Some of them lived lived with the tribes, and they had a very high. Uh, uh, respect for them and others uh, they battled with. Uh, so uh, there's there's things. Like yeah, that. they have this 
isn't the stories out and I believe it's in uh, Yucca Valley down in Southern California or right. it might be Nevada I'm not sure oh. and uh, they had the Indians had the stories of the tall red-haired giants nice. that they went to battle with and they killed them all in the cave right mm -hmm. yeah there were, and there, there were bones caves. found from that yeah right and, and even in uh, uh, here in Kentucky in mammoth we've even found they found uh, giant redheads and they've also found smaller pygmy size redheads uh, in in caves you know uh, the children or uh, who knows but uh, but they, they but they've been discovered and found uh, in several occasions hey Joe I got to ask you a question this is way off of the off of the topic but we're talking about sure. China over there and uh, um, archaeological things um, what do you think about the dopa stones? Uh, the what? The dopa stones. There was a small tribe out there. They found uh, round dopa. discs that had a hole in them. They were called the dopa stones. Oh yeah, I've I've, I've seen something about that. Um, I haven't gone into it a lot, but um, there we are. They the the round. They're like a disc type stone, and they got a hole in them. Right, exactly. Supposedly, uh, yeah. yeah. Supposedly, China and Russia kind of swept them away. And uh, uh, one of the things that was out a while ago is that they could actually there was actually a you could actually play it. There was frequencies on it or yeah, some kind like of like a like like almost like a record. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But those have been uh, hushed up and also hidden away. Oh, there's there's so much. Uh, well, there's a term for it, forbidden archaeology, which I've right. always been fascinated in. Is someone who likes to dig in the ground and find things. There's things all over the world where people will discover something. They'll say, "Look at this," and I'm going to go, uh, "That doesn't fit the narrative." Sorry. Right. We're, we're going to hide that. <laughs> you know. Yeah. All the experts out there have been talking about one thing for 40 years. Somebody comes up with something that's going to destroy their paradigm and they just say nope doesn't exist yeah and that's one of the poor things about science they spend all their time trying to prove a fact that if something comes around that makes it different they, they go, don't have an open mind yeah they can't open mind they can't open their mind they spent all their life working on this one theory and all of a sudden that theory is blown totally away mm -hmm. and to accept the new theory would mean that all their work that they've or, done over the last 40 years is garbage Exactly, exactly. And they're not going to let that happen. It. They're not going to let that happen. And That's every, sad. That's probably what the Smithsonian's got going. Every yeah. once in a while, something will slip through because somebody gets it to the right person at the right time or they put it full-fledged in a museum before it can be taken away or put away. Or, and then it disappears. And then it's just, oh, it's a mystery. Or, <laughs> oh, it... It must have been from this tribe over here that did this and this year, even though it's carbon dated for 10,000 years before that. But, uh, like, the Antikythera mechanism, for instance. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Right? Like, different things that are found like that all over the place, but a lot of them never make it into the museum. <laughs> no. Well, and a lot, of people, a lot of people who find certain things end up very dead. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. And they blame it on a virus. Um, but, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, no. no. Oh, yeah, thank you. Golly, oh. here we go. So, Jason. <laughs> yes. What's your next question? Okay. Hmm. Did you and any of you ever know about the uh, <clears throat> disc that was found from the crop circle? Okay, which uh, one? Which crop circle and what disc? It was a disc that was found back in, I think it was 92, and it was there were three of them, and they were all of unknown, unterrestrial uh, alloys. Huh. Were in atmosphere... Atmosphere environment that had to be in outer space or you know factory made, but I don't think I heard that one. Uh, you heard about that, Barry? Uh, yeah, and they had the same symbol on it, but it was fractal imagery. I, I, 
Uh, I have heard it. I don't know enough about it. I just know of it. Uh, the, the one that comes to mind for me of the crop circle is the disc that they filed binary code in that actually, yeah. you know, as we shipped away uh, uh, on the Voyager, I believe, and put the gold disc on there of DNA and everything else, what they had to report and what they brought back in this in the area down by the observatory there. I can't remember the name of the place. Uh uh, down there in Mexico, but uh, it was uh, uh, the crop circles appeared outside of it, which gave the answers to. Um, right, so the image was the answer, but they didn't find the disc. And that's the name. Right? No, yeah, yeah. The image itself was okay, the answer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just but, like the DNA code, the whole uh, the helix found in the right, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, offered to give thanks to whoever did it, but they got the whole code now. Right, yeah, the whole code, and it, it's it's yeah, out. It's, was, yeah, it's very it's very interesting, and you're right, I think it was about 92 when that happened, so. Crop circles fun. themselves are amazing things, you know. Unfortunately, we do have people that have tried to recreate them and do those kind of things, but the ones that you <laughs> see that, that are <laughs> out. They come know. back every year. Did you know that the ghost phantom? They all the real ones come back every year. The real ones have uh, codes that you can register with microwaves, Geiger counters, all these different things. There's certain things that are known to real ones. Right. No. So the, the the real ones actually, uh, yeah. if you try to recreate them, you can't actually bend the corn stalks or the wheat, whatever the crop is, or make it. You can't. You can't form them Can't without breaking for one yeah. it's got radiation right. trace for two and it's got molecular molecular dna changes in the uh yeah. the crop structure right that can't be yeah what, what, what you're talking about eric there is they have uh the the crops aren't bent over by somebody walking over it with a board right there's actually nodes in the stocks that are <laughs> exploded and bent Exactly, yeah, it's not there from, are no. It's not from yeah. a physical force of somebody walking over it with a board, a yeah, bunch of art students out in the field. I, I'm just reminded they're actually that, laid down. I'm reminded of the two guys in the UK that tried to come out years ago and say, "Yep, it was Doug us. and Dave." Uh, yeah, right. Exactly. And, exactly. And, well, even 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 if they could recreate, how how will you explain the fact that the night that you know the night they claimed they did it, there were like hundreds that same night. You know, different continents apart from each other. There's no way they could have, even if they could duplicate, which they couldn't. Um, right, and the ones that they, the ones that they created, did not have the nodes. I mean, no. the nodes exactly. were, you know, and the nodes are almost like from radiation, almost. You know, where so, what causes those stocks to have those nodes in them? So we did a whole show here. I think it was last year, or no, it was yeah, it was, it was last year. A whole show just on what could crop circles be. Um, some of the things that we discussed were they could be markers. They could be used for uh, markers for different races, uh, indicating where certain materials were for harvesting. Um, you, you know, kind of like a, as you're flying your craft over this planet, here's where the goal is, kind of, you know. It, it, nobody or how really, about markers for time travelers? Yeah, that's a you have a map too. that says in this field, in this time, there's going to be this marking. Oh, I know what year I'm in. Right, and True. that's a possibility too. Hmm. Or don't go to this field, or you're going to get shot. <laughs> or it could, or, or it could be areas where there are portals at. You know that that is say, <laughs> all right, take a left here, and you're going to go to this portal here, and it's going to it's going to, it'll be able to transport you from this point to this point. Or Stargate, yeah. Stargate, you know, there's supposedly supposed to be a Stargate in Iraq, which is the whole reason we went to the Gulf War was all yes. over a Stargate. I don't think so, but okay. <laughs> uh, but there's supposed to be what three Stargates on this planet, I believe. Uh, More than that. Well, uh, let me ask you about that. Did you were you ever involved in any of the? Uh, uh, Rumors had that there was a lot of activity out there in caves, and we were uh, kept away from, you know. And yeah, uh, with uh, the uh, uh, the gin and so forth like that. So supposedly special forces was involved. 
there was one picture that circulated the internet for a long time that supposedly our troops were involved in getting uh, ancient well, it's on a pal ancient technology out of caves. But I'll be honest, I analyzed that picture and looking at the unit, the unit, uh, and this doesn't prove it, anything. But looking at the unit patches of the unit that was right there, Tenth Mountain was never in Afghanistan at that point in time. So that disproves the picture. Does it disprove the fact that we might not have done that? No. But that unit was photoshopped into that picture. So that kind of, to me, discredits that story. Yeah. Or maybe that picture was taken, but it wasn't in Afghanistan. Yeah, right, exactly. That's what right. I was It could have been somewhere yeah. else that they were. It could have been. But I don't. I just don't see them using our military for you know. We have enough secret military out there to be doing that. Delta Force could be doing that. Not I actually. Like all that, that sneaky was... stuff is all being done by private contractors now, anyway. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like, oh, like Blackwater. Yeah. There you go. Right. I hate yep, Blackwater. All Blackwater. I hate yep. Blackwater in Iraq, but some of the rudest <laughs> sons of bitches. <sighs> but yeah. well. I'm well, you know, one of the things about a FOIA form nowadays is you don't have to worry about a FOIA form because they've 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 privatized it all, because right. you can't you can't get a information from a private company, so you can't file a form, uh, you know, a, FO, uh, uh, a uh, Freedom of Information Act uh, on a company. So the way that they dispersed that and got that out of the way is by giving it to contractors. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to throw out a really odd thought here. It just, I don't know why, but it popped into my head. Um, so we know that ETs can manipulate time, right? Like mm -hmm. as far as our yeah. thoughts of time or our processing of time. Uh, well, you know, with plants, right? If you sing to a plant, or it grows differently. <laughs> When you talk to them, when you sing to them, when you play music for them, that it grows more. Right? Right. Positive energy. Yes. So what I'm asking is, do you think that maybe crop circles are just art forms that they're using these plants, but they're making them bend themselves, which is why there's nodes on all of them? Do you know? Happy think, plants. Grew it and turned. And <laughs> yeah, that's it. You have to ask the plant. You know, right? The, 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 <laughs> But they're happy, flattened plants. And, you, got you know, a, count. a lot of the stories that you hear about with crop circles is nothing grew there after that happened. So it destroys the earth. It doesn't, it, they're, they're not happy plants or dead plants. Barry, you just said you were going to have to ask the plant. If my wife <laughs> in the next week is out in a field <laughs> talking to a bunch of plants, I'm blaming you. <laughs> Yeah, but we also know that, you know, uh, energy and frequency uh, and vibration you know, are, are the keys to almost everything that we do out here nowadays. You know, that's, that's something we all have to look at. And the plants do, if you play 432 uh, frequency to a plant, it grows better. You know, that is the natural home of the earth. That's the natural thing of it, of it is. You know, music used to be 432. It That's close to the key of C. Right, exactly. There's yeah. different keys. Each in each, Even in sacred geometry, there are different things. Uh, a triangle, uh, you know, all, all the things to an octagon and everything else are all in different keys. Key of F, F sharp, C. And when they're all played together, they're harmonic. It's all a harmonic thing. You know, that's the thing that... You know, it started with Pythagoras. Uh, well, I can't think of his name. Shoot, uh, Pythagoras. Pythagoras. Yeah, I'm sorry, but you know, it's it, it is a very important key. Frequency is a very important key to the everyday life. And as we raise our frequencies, uh, do we not become more spiritual and more uh, uh, capable of doing things that we uh, have in our own systems that we don't know about yet? So, do you think that we're going to have a bad crop year with all the negative energy floating around in the world right now? No. No? Nope. 
Like, I'm honestly asking, because, like, there, you got to think there is a lot of negative energy going on Well, that right goes now. with my question, actually. Oh. Yeah, well, so, my, my question is, do you think that energy enhanced by pandemic social negativity has changed how entities have begun to interact? And that would go with crops. It would, you know, we have negativity in, in, in bombarding the, the planet just from how the governments are, are interacting, how the humans are interacting. Uh, do you see Well, the, well you, you, wait, you know, you can say that, say that it's negative, but the fact that everybody is being faced with the exact same thing right now. Mm -hmm. I might die of COVID means people are being brought together. There's still a lot of negative stuff. There's still a lot of arguing. There's still right. a lot of hate. But because this is one thing that's affecting everybody worldwide, everybody's in the same boat for once. And I agree. that seems to me and there might be a lot of positive things because of that. Well, I, 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 you took the words right out of my mouth. Um, out of all the negativity that is going on, I do see a lot of positivity. It pull, it's pulling communities together. On one side, exactly. We, regardless of the negative assholes that are still in those same communities, a majority <laughs> of the communities are pulling together. Yeah. So well, maybe, let me ask you. Well, it's a yin and yang, a check and balance. It always is. Yeah. Uh huh. So we're not going to throw everything off because one person's an asshole. Because just like one person being an asshole, there's one person that's a saint, and it, it balances. Let me throw a curveball at you. Okay. I mean, let's let's we go love to. Uh, I can uh, hit a curveball. Yeah. Have, <laughs> have you have, have you noticed that there's that uh, uh, chemtrails have been down since the virus? I haven't seen exactly. a exactly. You know, so uh, <laughs> I see them a lot here. Uh, you know, I mean, I got a great view of the sky. I'm up in the the northern Sierra Nevada mountains. And I used to sit and watch the chemtrails all the time. And since right. this has happened, I've seen one or two. Very you right. You know, I mean, those are the horizon-to-horizon -horizon ones. I like yeah. sit and watch the planes go over constantly. I know they're the same, and there'll be one trail. So you can't say it's weather doing it. Yeah. Because there's a lot of traffic up there still. But right. the chemtrails have dropped. Yeah, they have. The sky looks bluer. It okay. does. If you're gonna follow the idea that chemtrails are um, man-made or alien-made, because well, some theories out there is aliens. Yeah, right? but no. But if they're well, yeah, and this would still apply for man-made or for mm -hmm. alien-made. Um, if they are to something to affect humans, there are honestly, <clears throat> even though we still see a lot of people going out doing the regular thing, there are a lot less people on the streets. Oh, absolutely. Why would they waste it? <laughs> True. Well, I'll give you something. My brother had a really interesting uh, take on the chemtrails. His idea was that, okay, it goes into the alien thing with the UFOs, and they're being, you can't see them on radar, or, or they can mask themselves visually. His idea was that there was barium and aluminum, supposedly, in these chemtrails, and they're using it, they spray over an area. A UFO goes through it, and it sticks to the UFO, and they can track them that way. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like the it's kind of like the old talcum powder on the floor to see if a ghost or something walks through it. Right, right. exactly. Yeah, I haven't heard that theory, but I'll, it, it's it's an interesting thing to look at because I kind of like it. <laughs> you know, the, yeah, My brother you know, came I up with that one, knew. and I, I bought him a beer it. because of it. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know, know, and <laughs> I'm I, I'm sitting here thinking, like, from the aliens' point of view, it's kind of like when we go over new road construction <clears> and. Yeah, pick your the underneath side of your car picks up that black tar, and you're just like, crap, gotta wash it. Crap. Out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, yeah. well, look at look at all the old movies with the Invisible Men. How do they always find them? They throw something on them, and then they can see them. See them. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Stephen <laughs> Greer talks about the part. part. Yeah, that's a good possibility. <laughs> Honestly, they talcum powdered the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> It's old school. Right, Stephen Greer? Yeah. yeah. It is old school. Is uh, hang a bell on a string between a door, and when the bell rings, you know mm -hmm. something came by? Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, when we still do that. I mean, and, and it's funny, we do that with uh, uh, devices and so forth. We'll put bells on doors. We also put uh, 
uh, motion sensors on it. If, if the handle moves or whatever, you'll you'll hear a, it go off, and it's same you know, the same thing. It's, it's uh, I actually trust in that stuff a lot more than all the new electronics, like you said, the ovulus and all that. That was you know right. programmed you words and all that. Like, and all those starlight. No. <laughs> so, Cole, oh. you got a question tonight. I do. All right. Okay. So, we all know that every story out there, every thought process, every story shared has some semblance of truth to it. What are your thoughts on the classic American tall tales and how much truth could there be in these? And this kind of leads into the idea of so, we have the classic American tale of Paul Bundy. Or Paul, no, Paul. Paul hey, hey. Bundy. Paul Bundy. Yeah. Is it possible he was a giant? Hmm. So you're talking like Paul Bunyan, Paco Spill. And be the, yes. blue, be the blue ox. Okay. Yeah. Huh. I just think he was a very tall logger. But, but when you lead into that, look at Andre the Giant. Yeah, and you that's know. the thing. You lead into these stories. Like, you look at these stories, and there's so many things out there that you can attribute to them to. <clears throat> John Henry. Mm-hmm. One of the strongest men out there ne- always had accuracy with his um, uh, hammer and you think of a woman who uh, gets into a car accident and has to lift the car to save her baby so I think when you look at legends like superhuman strength type thing right I think when you look at legends like that I think the size how tall they were is an algorithm or is a, a symbolic of their heroism maybe you know, okay, so uh, me personally, I, if you think about, like, uh, what everybody says about George Washington, oh, he chopped down a cherry tree, and he did this, and he did that, and he had wooden teeth, and he, all of this. He ate people. Okay. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they take something that meant more in the time than it necessarily would now, and they built legend around it. And created these men among men, or women among women, whatever you want to put that. Like, uh, you can go as far as, like, Joan of Arc and all of these things. There's no way that half of the crap that actually is written, it happened the way that they said it did. They just became legends among men, or whatever. And yeah, they might have been a bit taller, they might have shown up at work every day and hammered those nails, and... He might have even said that he was faster than a machine. But whether he was 10 foot tall and 15 foot wide and could lift four hammers at a time, maybe not. But think about like William Wallace and how everybody talked him up and said that, oh, he could do this and he could do that and he could do all of these things. Mm -hmm. Well, not exactly. He could shoot fireballs at his ass. Right. right. Not exactly, but if you build the person up that much, I want that ability. Then it becomes legend, and it becomes something that this person definitely lived, and they did this, this, and this. I so, can see some of it being exaggerated a bit. I mean, uh, me, I'm a person of extremely large stature, and um, a short story. The last time I went to the store, I remember I was in the Safeway. I walked around the corner, and there was a lady standing there. She turned and looked at me, and she looked up and said, Oh, my God. <laughs> Scared the shit out of her. Of course, you know, I had I had the full parka on and the mask and all that stuff. So, you know, I, was, <laughs> I had all that bundled up, up for please. the COVID thing in the store. and, and But I'm sure people, she went home and told people, My God, I saw this guy who was 10 foot tall. <laughs> and, you know, the stories get blown out a little bit. All right. Like every fishing story ever. Well, think of like Bloody Mary and, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the stories kids today use to scare each other. Uh, was there any fact with Bloody Mary? We, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, if, I mean, if, if you ask me, yeah. If you ask me, it's like kind of going back to the old days when we were kids and we used to do light as a feather, stiff as a board right. deal. Yep, uh, I remember that one. I I've mean, seen it happen. Uh, I've seen it happen, too. Uh, I can't explain it. I don't know what it is. You know, what we do is we uh, we actually get ourselves prepared to be able to do a supernatural thing, and that's an ability that we have that we haven't un- untapped you know and there are 
like you said, with the adrenaline running where a person picks up a car off of a person or does those kind of things. Mm -hmm. We have the ability to do supernatural things. It's just being able to get to that level to be able to do that, you know, and, 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 and teaching yourself that. We've seen that through uh, gurus, all kinds of different things, you know. Um, it, it, it's preparing your own mentally. And who knows, these people may have had gifts that were uh, – uh, th thought to be uh, supernatural or whatever, and they just had a way to be able to use them. So, I, I threw a refrigerator at somebody one time, and that story got around. But that I would just, work. <laughs> I think it's amazing how some, like some of these stories, end up in the paranormal realm, and some of them end up in tall tales. You know what I mean, right? But you see the paranormal stories we go investigate. Uh, you know, like Lisa and I are chatting in the uh, in, in the chat room now. Bloody Mary was a conjuring, but mm -hmm. like we talked about earlier in the show, using a mirror. Mirrors, uh, as we discussed, are perfect doorways. They're perfect. Doorways. Yes. Well, I was a lonely kid, so when I was calling for Bloody Mary, I was looking for a girlfriend. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, sad, sad thing. I almost yeah, married him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I can be perfectly honest. I have no fear of this, but I will tell you guys, I am terrified of mirrors. Anybody who knows me knows that I am terrified of mirrors. I do not have any mirrors in my house except for one little tiny one in the bathroom that is actually too high to really see into, but is just enough that if the kids need to figure out something, they can climb up on this little stool and look into it. I do not have any more mirrors in my house. Except for like reflections and uh, windows or whatever. But I she grew has scared up herself with. in a house uh, yeah. where there were a million mirrors everywhere and it was terrifying all the time. I don't do them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got a mirror way. hanging in my barn Ooh. and the story is that my uh, father found it actually from his grandfather that it used to hang in an old bar here, you know, in the 1800s, and it's hanging out in the barn. It's huge. You it used to sit behind a bar was the story, and it's, you know, it's not perfect. You know, you look at it, and there's defects in it because it's from the 1800s. It's not something brand new, and I've always got a weird feeling about that mirror, but I've always liked it. And, you know, the weird thing about the older mirrors, they were silver-backed also. Yeah. You know? Yeah, which is which they don't do anymore. And uh, silver has its own properties to be able to do uh, uh, unique things. And, you know, I'm going to tell you the truth. I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of mirrors because of the fact that we didn't have, it wasn't called uh, Bloody Mary. It was another thing called uh, the Spirit of Mary Worth. And uh, I, uh, being young and uh, having paranormal experience, everything else, going into the bathroom, shutting the door, and uh, calling on that uh, three times, and uh, uh, there for about six months, I couldn't even drive it. I mean, I'd drive a car, look in my rearview mirror, and I was seeing Dan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, real quick, let's switch topics for the last ten minutes of the show. Let's talk about Stephen Greer. I know, I know oh. you're familiar with Stephen Greer, uh, uh, Barry. Uh, reason, and so, so this came up out of the, what's up? Are we all here? Yeah. 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 So this came up Google because, or Alexa was here for a second. Oh. In someone's house. <laughs> so Jason and I were just talking about Stephen Greer in, uh, in, in chat, and, uh, I don't like Stephen Greer because Stephen Greer, to me, well, from what I've seen, He's always played one side. So you have, uh, and we've talked about this on S4 before, you've got to the Stars Academy saying, oh my God, all aliens are evil. We've got to just shoot them down and, 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 and not ask questions. Just kill them all. But you've got Stephen Greer on the other flip side of it going, oh, all aliens are wonderful. There's no bad aliens. Oh, let's just go worship the aliens. Uh, yeah, that's what I see. That's my interpretation of it. And I don't play that crap. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. You watched oh, yeah. the CE5? Yes. Have you I seen am. how he invokes you to have a spirit come into your body? See, he, has, he has you channel a spirit to come into your body to possess you. 
Yeah, I think that's, that's stupid. Uh, <laughs> I know, I'm just saying, that's what a CE5 is. Right. And nobody yeah. says anything. Nobody blows that out of the water. Nobody says anything. Just like how people use white sage to make uh, bad energy go away. No, it's cedar. White sage opens both portals, uh, positive and negative, and most likely the negative is going to come and terrorize everything. My problem with that is be careful what you wish for, because not all the aliens are good, not all the aliens are bad. There, there, there's, you know, but they're not aliens either. They're used perverted names so they can take the power away from what they are. They're angels. They're one of the 13 angels. Uh, I have a hard time with that one. But also but, other interdimensional beings, I'm not saying that, but the ones that are portraying, like the greys, those are the cherubs, mm-hmm. and the ones without ears are androids. There's, there, this is all known technology. This is patented technology. They've patented right. cloning. They've patented. You ever heard of clonade? Say that one again. Have you ever heard of clonade? No. Okay. Well, they took the shroud of Torn, forty-eight years, fifty years ago, whatever, and they cloned that, and they made forty-seven batches of them. And this is children that are your politicians okay look up look up cloning they, they were hunting them because when they came public it, that that's when they made cloning illegal when cloning came out and told the public what they'd done hmm. they started hunting them huh and then so, they and so and we'll, we'll, look, we'll, we'll look into that we'll do some research on that uh, send me some information on it and we'll do a show on it cool or no, one of the huh we're down the last 10 minutes. Yeah. Friend. Barry. Yes. Where can we find Into the Fire for Tuesday night with us? Oh, Tuesday <laughs> night for us. You can. <laughs> this is going to be an excellent night. We can't wait for that. Uh, it is uh, on uh, Blog Talk Radio. That would be www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Into the Fire. Uh, Tuesday night, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific, uh, 8 p.m. Central, and uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. It goes for two hours, and uh, it'll be a great night with all you guys. Really, really looking forward to that. Uh, you can also find me at uh, uh, Octagon Hall, uh, www.octagonhallmuseum.com. Uh, great great place uh, also uh you can find me at uh the night stalkers on uh, uh facebook we are almost we just got the uh we're doing the website redoing the website and uh, we've just now got the uh the cell phone version all done so we're really looking forward to be able to put that all together and so that will be out shortly and it should be uh, night stalkers paranormal uh dot org uh and then uh uh, just uh, Barry Gaunt on Facebook. If you'd like to friend me, please do. So, Rock on. Thank you, Barry. Friend, we're no very problem. excited for that, too. I, I can't wait. Oh, man, I'm looking forward to it like heck. So. <laughs> Absolutely. And Jason, do you have any uh, websites or any uh, shows that you do that you want to pl- uh, plug? Just my posts on my page, and there's some upcoming stuff, but it's not developed yet, but it'll be posted pretty soon. Okay. Thanks. And Joe, Joe will hopefully have a YouTube page available where he's shaving a bear soon. Oh, I can't wait. I oh, will not I... be filming the shaving of the bear. <laughs> well, so we need you to do YouTube videos on how to sharpen pointy sticks properly. You can That play. I might do. You <laughs> might actually watch that. <laughs> That's it. You can put it in the Facebook thing, like everybody doing their kids shaving their hair. I did it at home by myself. Right. <laughs> oh. Coronavirus made me shave a bear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that might be something in the future, too. Um, yeah. The way, and Joe, the, way things are, the way things are going, we're all going to, um, yeah. All right, Hope's everyone. Day. And for us, um, as always, visit www.s-4radio.com. Um, we've got an excellent store there with a lot of good stuff in it. Um, get your shower curtain. 
shower curtains, socks, yeah, coffee mugs, and yeah, we still need to get Joe and Tim your uh, t-shirts and coffee mugs and uh, gear out. Absolutely. So make sure, folks, you're still doing your isolating and self quarantine uh, if you need to. Yeah, don't forget to join or join the group Forest Moon Paranormal. Yep. Um, also, for any of our local listeners, um, if you go to GoFundMe.com, um, we have a GoFundMe set up for Janet Clark in the Cape here. Um, Tuesday night, she lost her home. Yep. To a so, house fire. Yes. So she can use your help if you can afford to do it. That'd be awesome. So. All right, so we'll see you all next week. Next week we are talking fire safety, we are talking drought, we are talking wildfire, and uh, it, it is fire season early. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Fortunate. So we'll see you next week. Stay safe and keep your eyes to the skies. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight on S4, the official voice of Forest Moon Paranormal. You can contact S4 through our website at www.s-4radio.com or on Facebook. Make sure you give us a like on our page and join the Forest Moon Paranormal group. If you are interested in advertising, take a look at our packages and contact Cole or Eric at 1-360-999-2830. Again, thank you. And remember, keep your eyes to the sky.